Welcome to Shut Up and welcome to the In Game Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Evans, with my second chair, Jerron Williams, aka the Evil of Coup. And you can also call me the In Game Boss, aka your retro activist, and our season guest, Curtis is in the third. Hello. How you doing, Curtis? Doing well. So, uh, just to give y'all a heads up, by the time you listen to the show, we had to actually do an early recording because I'm going to be out of town. Um, the this week as I talked to you about this actually not this week it actually happened last week so anyways <laughs> so some of the news we're going to be telling you're going to be hearing in this episode is going to be maybe a little behind and whatnot so just be prepared for that but we still want to give you our thoughts about what the news is going on and everything like that but I want to thank everybody for listening to the show we are a video game podcast our goal is to challenge ourselves and challenge you the listeners to enjoy the topics that we have to say and remember you can always find all our shows on Twitter and Facebook just make sure you find the in-game boss program just type that whole thing out, and we'll give you a, a whole library of find it, things. or it will find you. Right, right. That's what the boss does. He likes bosses like to leave little breadcrumbs. <laughs> One of the thing I'm lacking though, uh, I, I keep forgetting to say minions. That's my that's the thing I've been trying to push. So I got to work on saying my minions. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try that on the next episode. My minions. <laughs> I need to get the music. Does you know that has like the the lightning with the piano like da 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 or something you know or something like that I don't know oh the dramatic sting right yeah right we don't wear goggles though we're not those uh, illumination minions now right <laughs> but uh, how's y'all week uh, how's y'all week man good it's been good it's, it's been good. good and if you want to listen to a really good episode the last episode was a great episode we had a uh, Ricky McNeil from HXC on here oh, and yeah. it was a fun interview and I- and we actually talked about uh. Arc System Works and talked about and their developers of, you know, Guilty Gear, Blaze Blue, and, you know, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. We talk about cartoons, animes, and cart- and gaming that we love them to oh, yeah. give touch. that treatment to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you know, with them. You know, uh, Bleach was mentioned in there. Full Metal Alchemist was in there. <laughs> River City Ransom was in there. Yeah, Lost I, uh, Airbender. Yeah, yeah, Lost Airbender was in there. I, I had a friend message me and say, oh, I would have loved to hear One Punch Man. I was like, oh, 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 yeah. oh someone mentioned that? Yeah. Oh, yes. cool. Yeah, shout out to Amos. Thank you. Cool, cool. You know, I'm not going to lie. I thought it'd be funny you put Tenchi Muyo in there just to see all the girls <laughs> fight for a guy. I mean, hey, they did it with SNK heroines. Why not? All right. Yeah, all why right. not? Let's make that happen. <laughs> Let's make that happen. And so, oh, But remember, you can listen to our show on Pop Being You, too, Spotify, and iTunes. So always remember that. Guys, what have you guys been gaming? You- oh, man. Uh, of course, as usual, Tekken, but... Also, I've been playing some Overcooked 1 and 2. Overcooked uh, is free this month if you're yes. a PlayStation person. Yes, and that's I don't why know why I the second the one is not, but okay. I mean, I got Overcooked 2 on the Switch, but I pl- was playing Overcooked, uh, the original, on the PlayStation, playing with my fiancé, and uh, we're just... It is a very good exercise in communication. Oh, <laughs> because okay. you were saying, "Why are you giving me this burger without lettuce? Take it back!" Right? No, don't do it. no, I need a plate. I need to bust some suds. I need to wash dishes. I don't have a plate. Mm-hmm. It's burning. It's burning. Come here. <laughs> so it's fun. It's fun. That sounds like the worst game session of burger time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but it is a blast. I, I I am so glad that game has been was made. Kudos. Mm-hmm. Kudos to the developers. What about you, Curtis? What have you been playing? I've been showing my father-in-law. Uh, we just completed a playthrough of Detroit Become Human. Oh, okay. Uh, nice. He really liked that. I Did went... he get to make the choices? Yeah. Um, To the part where characters almost died. And <laughs> then... Because I would, I would pause it really quick. I was like, oh, okay, should we do this or should we do that? I'd give him no hints uh-huh. at all. And I'm just have a smirk like, hmm, okay. I hope, I hope this turns out right because I, I know what happens. Right. That's part of the fun. It's like, go for it. And uh, Connor dying kind of show. He's like, oh, my God. Right. I still need to play that game. I still yeah. do. I think there's a little pack now with, like, the, um, the developers. Rain and Beyond. Yeah. yeah. Beyond, I wish I can take out of it, but I'll take it. Yeah. Beyond, is, I think, is the weakest one. Yeah. I, I have – I. I actually would think Heavy Rain because I I enjoyed playing Beyond more than I than Heavy Rain. Really? Yeah, Heavy Rain was it was okay. I guess I like Heavy be, Rain because the story keeps going. I think the story in Heavy Rain was better, but the Beyond controls was a lot smoother. Yeah, mm. Beyond felt a little bit more. I I felt uh, more in control. I think I didn't like Rain. the jumps, like the how they decide that they chopped the story up. Yeah, like one moment you're in the future, one moment you're back. Yeah, middle. You could, it wasn't like 
you can play the game in chronological order, or you can play it as the uh, the the writers intended. Mm -hmm. So okay. I I so I mean it gives you an option, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I I mean I haven't played Heavy Rain in a handful of years. So I'm Heavy Rain to me is a game that was. I guess you can go back and have fun with it, but I think it was good at the time that it was released. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like Indigo Prophecy. Oh, that's, same doves. That's mm -hmm. on my that's on my list. Way, way, way in the back, but it's on my list. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started a Spider Man PS4 playthrough. Ooh, um, <laughs> Curtis, I think you convinced him. That this is a reason for you to keep playing it. I think. I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Yep, it's like Steve. Let me show you something cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is my fourth playthrough, but I'll show you again. He is fully engrossed in it right now. Jeez. And he was like, he, oh, "Well, with Detroit, he's like, man, this is like almost as good as any movie I've ever seen." And yeah, he asked me about Spider Man. Like, is this part of the MCU? Is this the? No, 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 it's not. But it's good. It's really good. Mm -hmm. And privately on my own, not playing with my father in law. Uh, I picked up Theater Rhythm again, Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm. Oh, okay. Really like that. It's okay. just little. Oh, Isn't old... it like a button music game? Yeah, it's okay. a rhythm game. Okay. And I, I love it to death. Okay. It has music from the 1 through 13 and all the spin off series okay. Crystal oh, cool. Chronicles, uh, Final Fantasy, um, let's see, Type Zero. Okay. Um, what, Dirge of Cerberus? Does that have no, nothing from Dirge of Cerberus. It had uh, some tracks from Advent Children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And Final Fantasy Twelve. Mm -hmm. It had some tracks from. I'd, lo I'd love to see that come out on like the console, like for PSVR. That'd be cool, like Beat Saber. That'd yeah. Cool. Okay. So that sounds like fun. So I didn't really play a lot of games this week. I actually kind of like kind of chilled i'm giving my gas face right now right right no don't get me wrong i play i played the games that you probably mentioned like i play a little bit of overwatch i, I, I try to play a, a couple matches a day but nothing like big you know nothing like huge um i actually been watching trying to catch up on shows so like i finished netflix russian doll thought that was oh don't tell me don't tell me um, still working through it. so um that was it was a unique show yeah i don't know um when you get to the end maybe we'll talk about if there's could be more to it so you let me. Did let you me. ever get a chance? I recommended it a few months ago. A uh, high score girl on Netflix. I yeah. haven't had a chance yet. Oh, it's so good. It's okay. adorable too. Okay. Yeah. It, mm. It's like it's like a eating bite sized pieces of your comfort food each episode. Okay. What's really neat, Jeremy, is he's growing up when we were like in middle in elementary school, like before oh, okay. beat. Is yeah. it a coming of age show it's, then? It's, it's definitely that. that, and but it's like it takes place in 1991. It's going through the systems in Japan. Yeah. From, okay, I mean it goes even earlier. It's like even late earlier, 80s. Yeah, yeah, late 80s, and mm -hmm. you can even tell what year it is just by what systems he's talking about, what games are out. Okay, so, what's cool yeah. about the character is he's so he be. I think he's like maybe five years older than us. Maybe he mm -hmm. might be in his early 40s. Yeah, I mean he's in he's well into the elementary school and uh, he's going in into middle school, okay. isn't he? Um, by the time I think the PlayStation and the Saturn comes out, he's already like a first year of high school. Okay, so yeah, he's about three okay. four years. Is it how how long is it? Thirteen episodes. Thirteen about, episodes. Um, okay, actually, I think it's like up to fourteen. Oh, it, the, it like there's 12? some. Is it a part one thing then? There's a season one. Uh, they released some OVAs recently okay. onto oh, okay. it. But yeah, I definitely give it a binge okay. and just wait for season two. Actually, uh, John Robles, uh, you haven't met him, Jerron Curtis. You know who John Robles is. He Played used to, he uh, he used to do a show on my network called Area Forty Four, mm -hmm. and he used to be part of the Gamers and Podcast. Um, I actually bought him Overwatch for his birthday, and nice. he's like he like he loves it. He <laughs> loves it. And we were talk. I, he said something that made me think of like I said. No, he said that I wish that I played this game when it first came out, and I agree with him. But at the same time, I don't know if that's true because I think if I played the first time, I probably wouldn't be able to play with the characters that I chose now. Oh, yeah. Because I don't think that because there's a lot of characters, but those characters were not fresh out of the box when you first got it. It mm -hmm. was over the years he added more exactly, to it. Yeah. So I think now is actually for me a good time to play because now I got a bigger library of characters. Yeah, you know what I mean? Up to what? What? 30 almost 30 something some high it's number like, man the last few characters i remember coming out when i became a laps player was wrecking ball ash baptiste mm -hmm. and apparently there's another character coming out i don't know who it is but also oh, but also too i do a show with uh my friend nam tran called when jeremy met nam and mm -hmm. they finally do a movie podcast so we've been doing some movie reviews um movie recordings of that but then we went to go see endgame 
I'm not going to spoil it for the listeners. I'm just going to say that and move on. <laughs> um, but I actually watched Austin Powers the other day. Which one? The first one? Yes. Ah. Uh, yes. It, it, it feels – it's still – I don't know about timely, but it's still funny. There is some – okay. All right. The funny, <laughs> the funny part about the funny about that part of that movie is you can see the jokes coming. Uh huh. I still laugh for some reason. And I guess because at that time that they stuck with it. Like it didn't like okay, it didn't feel like the joke didn't work out and they didn't do it again. They looked like they were full throttle with the jokes they were gonna do, so it was just funny. And yeah. two lines in that movie, it cracked me up. I don't know why. Because Mike Byers, I think his face makes the jokes of his lines funny. I think mm-hmm. that's what sells them to me. Like he's one of the few. Adam Sandler, he sometimes can pull it off. He but commits, Mike Myers yeah. has some faces that can do it. And and the first one was when he's Austin Powers, he's in Vegas. And he's walking, he's walking around and he sees this guy and he said, like, Hey, there you are. And, and, and the other guy was like, oh, he's like, Oh, do you know me? He said, like, no, but you're there. <laughs> <laughs> that was like one of my favorites. I, like, I got to use that line. That line is hilarious. And then, and then, uh, there was a scene where you probably remember, have you seen Austin Powers, Curtis? Um, uh, I saw the second one. Okay. Well, in the, the first one, this is the one where, you know, he finally has a son played by Seth Green. Scary. Oh yeah, Scotty. Doctor. Yeah, yeah, Scotty. So they were in therapy. They went to this therapy class. Uh huh. Because uh, <laughs> because uh, they could get along really well. And Doctor Evil is mad at Scotty because he's not being evil enough. He's like being like a regular kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so there was a part at the end, uh, towards the end, where he was uh, what was it? It was so freaking funny. Oh. He tells Scott to leave for some reason because – oh, no, no. That's what happened. So what happened was um, Dr. Evil doesn't want to straight out, like, kill him. But Scotty keeps saying, like, just shoot him. And he's like, that's not how it works, Scott. <laughs> that's not how it works, okay? And then oh, he tells just, and then he just – Yeah, and then he just says, just leave. Just just, just leave, Scott. <laughs> and and he's talking about – like, well, Wait a minute. We had therapy together. We had this moment. He said, I liquefied the group, you little shit. <laughs> it's just the fact that like Dr. Evil is trying to be the good father, but he's trying but he has to still be evil. It's so, uh-huh. like I care about you, but I'm gonna treat you like crap. Until you stand up to me and be evil be evil. So like I think like I'm watching the spy who shagged me. That's the one you're watching. Yeah. But the problem is with this movie is it's going back to what Austin Power knows compared to Austin Powers going to a world that's unfamiliar with them. And I think that's why the first one to me is better because it's him, you know, being cryogenic for 30 years and he has to get used to the 90s. It's a fish out of water. Story. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. now he's going back to 60s where it's that's all him. So there's no – I haven't finished yet because I, I forget some of the scenes in there, but I haven't finished yet. But I feel like when you're going back to something you know, it's hard to, you know – Where's the where's the conflict in this? Other than you're going back to evil because he's just trying to steal your mojo. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, what I mean? That's a good enough reason to fight somebody. I guess, but <laughs> but I forget that like I love that theme song. I I love that theme song. Um, the, you know the one? Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And every radio ad starts stealing it. I know, but dude, that's so. I guess because I heard the song with some bass. It just sounds so good, and I love the Ludacris number one spot song. <laughs> you know, I, 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 just love that. That beat is just so simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's simple, and it's just it's hard to like get it out of your head. <laughs> no, those, those are the most dangerous ones. Right. Same like the Kill Bill, the uh, the, the 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 chicks playing in the in the club. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you know that Mike Myers came up with the idea because he was listening to uh a song that was in the 60s and he asked what happened to all the swingers uh-uh. and then that's where he decided that he wanted to do a movie based on that and he want he's all it's also kind of a tribute to his father because his father introduced him to james bond and all these secret okay. agent movies and that's how he kind of made yeah, it the way it that. was okay. I so i was like that's interesting i didn't know that i didn't know like this song i forgot what song it is but it was inspiration to him like I want to do a story like this. Yeah. And so. <laughs> and, so but. and thus Austin Powers was born. Yeah. But no, like Austin Powers, I, I actually I actually really like the first one. I'm going to see how the spy who shagged me and um, Goldmember. Hold up. It's going to. Yeah. Hold up to this day. Because you could definitely tell by the 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 filming. They had a bigger budget because all the CG looks a lot cleaner than the first one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And also, to fun fact. Um. Uh, the actress that plays in the second one, uh, she played. Graham? 
she is gorgeous in yeah. that freaking movie, man. Well, you, you and she may... and she was cute in Hangover. You or... may remember her also from Boogie Nights. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah. I know about Boogie Nights, but <laughs> that's all I said. I know. I know. <laughs> And, you know, Mark Wahlberg, too. Yeah, but yeah, no, y'all got Google. Everybody got Google. But I think this is her, like, this is her. Wasn't it her is, breakout role? Almost? I think it was, actually. Boogie Nice was. Okay. Yeah, Boogie Nice was. Yeah, but if you think about it, like, she, her last film was was around 2014. What, what The Hangover? Hangover 3? Hang, okay, Hangover 3 was a cameo. Yeah. So, yeah, that's probably the last, like, big budget movie she was in. Yeah. She actually directed a, a movie Last year or this year, apparently. Hmm. Uh, so that's news to me. But she's turning 50. That's the other thing, too. Hey, you know what? Gosh, she does not look 50. Good for her. She knows about moisture and skin care. That's, what, that's, that, that's how you do it. Right. Speaking of Austin Power, Elizabeth Hurley still looks really good, too. Yeah. Moisturizing and skin care. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we seeing a theme here? Beyonce, you know, moisturization and now, skin care. Now, black people, it's kind of a different. We just don't crack. You know that. I, uh, yes, yes. Wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. No, there's no yeah, skin care. Yeah, care yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But anyways, um, so I... I didn't really have time to really play some like games games. Uh-huh. I just play what I normally did, so I don't have anything brand new to talk about. But updates. Let's talk about oh I'll do my updates first and then we'll get to your news. How about do right, that? Let's do that it. first. Um so uh update we have t- it's actually um by the time this episode came out, it's one year with the in game boss program. Oh, one uh, year. I know you only been with us for a month. I, you know Curtis has been in and out through the mm-hmm. whole year. Yeah, yeah. And so, so for people who don't know, this actually our first episode came out on May fifteenth, two thousand and eighteen, and it was me and a buddy named Caleb. Um, he was actually in the very first episode, and the first, I remember the first episode was about changing the formula of a game, and it's hard to go back. So, for instance, Breath of the Wild Zelda is it hard to go back to a traditional Zelda now kind mm-hmm. of t- kind of conversation? So, like we talk about games that change their formula up. Is it possible for them to come go back, or do they have to just stick what they have now? Like now, Zelda's open world. Do, are we? Can we? Is that the only we can accept Link now? Uh, well, so. I mean, I know you all already had your discussion, but I played Zelda as an open world, but I was still able to go back and play Link Between Worlds. Or talking about like the next entry. Oh, the next. Yeah, entry. that's what we're talking about. Like, is uh, the next entry can go back to the traditional? You know what I mean? Not counting uh, uh, remakes like Link's Awakening. No, we're talking about like, the ne- <laughs> like we're talking about like the next entry. Like, could they go back to the whole like? Go to a dungeon, get these items, mm. use the main item again to that. So Ooh. that's a discussion we kind of had. Mm. I bet you they're going to pull another Zelda 2 Adventure of Link, just go wildly the other direction. Right, <laughs> right. And then um, the next show we had was uh, the Game Halls of Rivalries. Yep. And that's the one Curtis and I were doing where we discussed two characters and how they changed the gaming industry because of their rivalries. You know, Mario, <sighs> Sonic. Does not feel that long ago. I know, right? It's nuts. Because our last episode ended in January of yeah. this year. And so, um, but, you know, we have Bayonetta, Dante, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nemesis and Tyrant. Um Shin- uh, Shinobi and Ryu. Uh, the yeah, funny Busa. story yeah. behind that, uh, when Jeremy pitched it to me, I fought to the deal, and I'm so glad Jeremy took my email uh-huh. serious. Poor Jeremy. Uh-huh. I've texted Jeremy with an epiphany at 3 a.m. so many times, yeah. and this one was like, let's do Joe and Ellie and um, uh, Lee, <laughs> Lee and Clementine. Clementine. Yeah. Oh, man. And yeah, Jeremy, that was a good Jeremy was very fair. He's like, okay, I want to know why I like this, but I need to know why. So I typed off a paragraph. He's like, okay, we yeah. will squeeze that in. <laughs> yeah. Because like the main thing, because of that one was, they were the only two known partners in, you know, in a zombie or, you know, post apocalypse yeah. kind yeah. of game. So that made perfect sense. And there were some that didn't make it to the cutting floor mm-hmm. because the fact that like, we just couldn't find one. One, we had Banjo Kazooie and Donkey Kong and D Kong. It just didn't work because they were just two, two really two different games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were both collectathons depending on which game, but yeah, yeah yeah, but Donkey Kong Country, like Donkey Kong sixty four, is the only collectathon, and Banjo Kazooie feels like it was more off of that, but better. Yeah, yeah. Donkey and when Donkey Kong Country returns, it still went back to two D, so it's hard. It was hard to do that. Uh, I think there's more if we try harder, but the way we do this network show is when I pitch an idea, other mm-hmm. than this show, because this show and the movie I do with, with Nam is more of this could be an ongoing. Yeah. We just have a limit. We have limitless material, right? 
with the show like Game Hall's Rivalries and Bond Never Dies, also a James Bond dedicated one, is the goal is we come with the idea and then we discuss how many episodes could we get out of it. Yeah. We're not forcing, like, can we make this go on for a long time? No. <laughs> we make it, I think we can do 10, I think we can do 15 episodes. All right. Then we make it there, then we decide do we have enough to go on. If we don't, it stops there and we mm -hmm. move on to the next project. That's it. But also, also what we wanted to do is make shows where people can come listen to it all the time without being on a timely thing. Kind of like this show. Like when I tell people to listen to the show, I tell them like where you want to start is maybe start right now where we're at and work your way backwards. Going yeah. to the first episode is tough because my opinion has changed probably from that time that was like years ago mm -hmm. to now. And so it's 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 tough. So I tell people just listen to the recent episode and then work your way back because then you get to hear more of a recent kind of stuff. Um, but you know, Game of Hall's Arrival, uh, Game of Hall's Rivalry was a show where you can start whatever you want, or wherever yeah. you want. That was the goal. Like start whatever you want yeah. and go. Bond, start at whatever you want. And that's the same thing with Nam and I's movie show. Start wherever you want. And that's what the series I wanted to do for now on. I didn't want too many continue shows because my, I'm a one person, and you know we all have lives, and we have schedules. Yeah. So we, it's good to do. It's good for me. Like let's do this. And also for the listeners, all most of my episodes I do are mostly pre-recorded ahead of time. We can't do this. See you every Saturday. We can't, we can't do that. Yeah, we don't have time. So what we do is we'll spend like, hey, let's spend a month, or let's do the best we can, spending a couple of months, get this down, and then when it's done, we air it. And then we we're good for six months. Relax. You have a life. Yeah. Then we come back and say, hey, you want to do more? And that's what kind of we're doing with Control Cabinet that's coming soon. We did our first five episodes. Yeah, we're gonna let them air. Mm -hmm. We're gonna come back and do oh. more. Oh, so get excited, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, so like that's the main update. So the up also update is the goal. So the goal last year was to make make these shows last to the end of the year, which I think we did really well. Like none of the shows got canceled. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, except for Area Forty Four. Uh, John decided he wanted to go a different path, but Area Forty Four was one of our other line of shows. Um, okay. But he had a different path, so it just didn't it didn't work out. But the fact that these four shows. The um, those four shows at the time, only three to made it, but the difference is John's show was his show. I had nothing to do with that. I was a co-host for that. So the fact that Bond and this show and the Game of Rivalry made it to the end of the year, that was great. No hiccups. It's impressive. No, no cancellations. Yeah. No like this ain't working out anymore. No, and dedication. I think, and I think, well, I think the reason is, is it. I think it's better for us to have these shows pre-recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Because it sucks if you can't come and then we can't air and we don't have nothing to air. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand. And so, and, so and it also helps against burnout. Yeah, exactly. And it's good to take a break and then come back to it. Yeah. We're fresh, new, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. So this year was the goal – two goals. One is to have at least 10 shows on the network either done or going. And I'm talking about even our past history. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, We're not talking about like ten new ones this year. We're talking about like I want to at least have ten shows that have made it on this network. Okay. And we're at okay. and with this Disney show coming in, and um the control cabinet and another one. You know we're we're at six. All right. So four more shows to go. Right. Whatever comes up first. And I have a lot of projects, but you know, you got to find the right people. So it happens. Happens. Um, it's not the big deal if I don't make it to ten. It's just like. I, I do go. I want to try to make shoot for the moon, even if you miss you right. among the stars. And the next one, the next one is um, collaborations with other podcast studios. So the okay. also, also last year was to work with different people. Like I mentioned, the Curtis when I had a new idea, I always wanted to work with somebody different every single time. Yep. Yes. Just to keep it going, unless like if there's something that really connects with us, then we'll do another thing, right? Mm -hmm. But the goal is like you know when I reach out to you, I was like, hey, here's a new person. I want to bring him in. So every. Always bring something new, and it helps with the networking. Like, oh, hey, yeah. this person knows somebody. He knows more people. They'll come to, just for him. Then they know the network, and that's kind of the goal. Yes, and it's and it's good to just – I like meeting new people sometimes if they're not too wild. If they're not too, <laughs> they're not too, oh, they're yeah. not too no. wild. Because don't most, get me wrong. We game, no, because we gamers kind of get over – overly excited when you meet someone that enjoys the same thing you have mm -hmm. yeah. you know yeah. like oh my god that was the only one yada yada i don't say okay no it's cool man it's cool you found you found the golden child i get it you get it get it but i'm gonna be normal so be normal <laughs> you know what i mean and you know that firsthand because you know retro game society don't get me wrong the community is cool but there is some people that get overly excited on certain things yeah. and yeah. so 
You mm. know, if, if I had to choose, I would prefer that than just way too muted. It's like, I'll give you passion, that. Passionate. I'll give you that. Yeah, the, the world needs more passion and exuberance. Everybody's way too grim dark. I'll give you that, but not too much passion. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, yeah, that's where like, you get like, to fanatic. Okay, okay. How many times have you ever got met somebody that you two have something in common and he just wanted to get up so up close in your face with excitement? <laughs> that's too much. Yeah. That's too much. Now if we're if we're like kinda like if I'm in the like at the distance of Curtis and it's like, Oh, you like this game? That's cool. What's your favorite part? You know, normal conversation. But he's yep. like, Oh my god, did you know this? And then you're like, Hey, did you notice that part in that little one level would go under under that thing and then it opens the locks and all that stuff and then when you open it up it has a key inside. Did you remember that? Do you know that part? That's like, Okay, dude, 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 we like the game. <laughs> I like the game. Like, 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 like we're going. We're, like, calm down. We're going next level. Like, 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 let's that. let's start from the, let's start with level one. Yeah. <laughs> no secret walls yet. No secret walls yet. Oh man. Yeah. You know. You know. And don't get me wrong. It, it's cool. I'm happy for them. It's just yeah. sometimes you have to learn to control that. Yeah. Yeah. It, That's all. It's 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 you know we've got to put a cap on it. And I under, I do understand. It. I've had to do that. Myself. It's over, I guess the word is Wrong overwhelming. Line. Like I don't want to yeah. feel overwhelmed having a fun conversation with mm-hmm. you. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I that's what I remember. On some and of you my, know, also too, and also too, the <laughs> toughest part too is, and this is not just gaming. This is people in general. When you have a fun conversation with somebody, the hardest thing for me to do because I make signs for it, they just don't get it. Is they you really want to move on to something, but yeah. they still want to keep walking with you and keep talking to you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like why? Like I'll say, oh, that's cool, man. And you're like slowly like taking the stuff. Yeah, I got you. I got you. And you're like, he's like, hey, now you know. I was like, dang it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Oh, My yeah. biggest yeah. phobia is if I ever met a YouTuber like Angry Joe or Jessica, I would scare the shit out of them because I would just not shut up. And that's my right. biggest fear. And I would miss those cues okay, that, to go the okay, F away. Maybe, maybe that's a little different because like it, that's a one in a lifetime kind of scenario per se. Uh, yeah. If I met Beyonce and we bring to have dinner, I go and freak the blue girl. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's there's Angry Joe and then there's Beyonce. It's, it's like I I, I, would, I ain't gonna faint, but I'm just saying like I will. I I'm gonna order the most expensive thing. I know you can afford it. I will say <laughs> I was I was like that when uh when I, oh met what's her what's her face uh, Jewel State. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, about a year or so ago, at Wizard World. I was like, all right, maintain, maintain. Yeah. All right, I like you in space cases. Good meeting you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, I kept it short, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> like, <sighs> dude, I actually want to know in the future, like, if this network becomes really big or something like that, to meet a fan. Yeah. That I really likes. It. I just want to know how that feels, just to just to get that experience. I, now, I don't care if it's overwhelming. Just the fact that, like, holy crap, that would this be cool. guy yeah. loves everything I have. Or, or the scare. One of the things that scares me is if someone says like, "I look up to you for my shows." I'm like, "Oh man, don't put me on that. Don't put me on that. Don't put me on that. Don't put me up there. Like, please ooh. don't. Don't put me on that pedestal. Please don't. Like, like appreciate me, but don't, 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 yeah. don't, 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 don't that's worship. Too much pressure. That's don't too much worship. Pressure. Say you influence me. I'm like, that's awesome, dude. I'm happy for you. But don't say like, I look up to you. He's like, dude, I am not a good example. I am not a good example. Yeah, like to look Charles Barkley once said, I'm not a role model. I'm not a role model. All right, all right. There, you listen to the podcast with me. You don't know what buying doors. I'm still a cool guy. I'm just saying, like, you know. I can only handle so many people at a time. You know what I mean? I put my pants on one leg at a time. Same like everybody right. else. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but um, the goal is to work with other networks. Mm-hmm. So, like, actually, I worked, uh, looked at to um, one podcast called Game Addicted uh, Podcast. Listen to their show. Send them an, um, a comment. Which, by the way, Podbean will not let you comment on their website, but you have to do it on the phone. That is dumb to me. Hmm. That is dumb. Okay. <laughs> that does- unless, now, Curtis, unless you comment on the the internet one, you have to show me because I guess I'm an idiot. No, it's through the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is dumb. That is straight up dumb to me. But that, that doesn't seem to make sense. I don't know why they do that. I don't know if it's to stop like spammers or what. I guess. I, have no idea. I guess. But um, I reach out to them and they reach out and they they're talking about it. they listen to the show. They they said they really like it. They like the energy and all this stuff. So like, yeah. I want to work on getting more podcasts to come do network with us. Like, yeah. Even do like uh, a series dedicated to. Like our two pods come together to do one little fun, maybe ten episode series, and then move on. Just help prom- help network and help promote each other. Yeah. And I'm kind, I'm trying to reach out to podcasts that are also on the rise. Not some they're like, okay, look, you got a thousand hits every episode. You don't, you don't need me. Yeah, yeah. You don't need me. It's, uh, it's kind of like Twitch, like. Ninja, you don't need me to watch you. You got like ten thousand people watching you. you You're getting me. Drake. You're running with Drake. You right, right. You got the support. But that's the goals for the network. So you know. 
the one year anniversary is awesome. I'm so glad that you know we did this because like the gamer stand, we gone for two years and we made it to a hundred. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Uh, this show making a hundred. That's a long voyage. So I, I'm yeah. not even thinking about hundred right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, it's it's hey, that's how you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. Right, man. right. But yeah, no, I much kudos because I, I got to give you a hand right there. Right. That's uh. that's, that's hard work consistency even if it is in seasons yeah so consistency but it's awesome just to meet because like we used to have podcast meetings in oklahoma but it kind of fizzled out a little bit but it was cool because i met a lot of podcast people to do network and stuff with that so i yeah. can't wait to work with them again on other future projects so i can't wait and so but whoa we're 30 minutes in we got to get to we got to get to the news the news, the hey, news. You your anniversary moment you i know man that. i think i gotta do an episode you deserved dedicated. that thank by you the way thank yeah. you thank you so much that means a lot to me i want to actually do maybe one spinoff like anniversary episode so i get people that are part and never get us in a big room uh -huh. and just have that a, would be fun it just have a fun giant conversation about like <laughs> about anything and so even probably get black and studios involved you Heck know yeah. talk about like you know you know the voyage and everything like that but let's get into the news and update. What you got? All right. Well, got? I got Sony State of Play, uh, uh -huh. which was fairly recent. Introduced a lot of cool games. Um, of course, we know about the Final Fantasy VII Remake. They're still going to do episodic. I think it's going to be one episode per disc, so mm -hmm. three episodes. Uh, looks good. The gameplay is going to be more of the Kingdom Hearts. So... You hit the nail on the head. Let's talk about seven. We got to get this out of the way. That's <laughs> why Curtis, warning. That's why Curtis is here. There's a warning. We were waiting um, for this moment. I didn't think my, it was going to be a podcast. My, when it comes to Final Fantasy VII, my objectivity hides in the closet and goes away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the game looks absolutely beautiful, and I am so excited. <laughs> you. So you. Okay. So. So the state of play, right? That's what uh, they mentioned. Um, yeah. So, Nintendo Direct. So, yeah. So you know they mentioned Mini Evil. Um, yeah. Another game, uh, they in, that Monster Hunter World, the expansion. Yeah, the um, the, the ice kind the of theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then you had the Predator. Yes, uh, it's kind of like it's from the makers of Friday the Thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope it's better than that. I don't know why I'm not a fan of the three against the, one the asymmetric. I don't like yeah. that way. I just don't like the you have one guy. Has to hunt three people. I, it's kind of like Friday the 13th, so it makes sense. I mean, mm. if they do it on the scale of Friday the 13th, like a fire team of six or seven people hunting the the predator and the predator hunting them, that, I mean, come on. That's pretty cool. You find your friend, you find your buddy against a tree with a, a, a barbed wire net around them. But that's the thing. Though. I'd rather be the predator. Why do I want to be everybody else? Uh, I don't know. They'll have to definitely put some good, some good weapons. Make if it there's attractive. no Arnold skin, I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, oh! I want I a Danny know. Glover skin too. Yes, yes. I want the Danny Glover and the Arnold Schwarzenegger skin. I want the Adrian Brody, but he should not be in the movie skin. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Um, so Final Fantasy VII. Let's let's stop there because that's the one that they're talking about. Now this was a re-release trailer, which I mentioned before you got here with Kurt is is that this was a trailer that. Maybe this wasn't the right way to portray it because it was basically reinducing the same kind of look trailer from the last time. It, yeah, it was, this was an expanded version of the one from three years ago. Yeah, and I felt like that maybe you should have brought something else, like maybe you should give us an overworld or show a new area um, outside of Midgar. Yeah, but it's mostly like you. It's basically like you saw the like the same thing the first two minutes, and then like here's a little extra. <laughs> one minute at the end of yeah, little get to see a little bit more of the battle how, yeah you know a yeah bit of which we system. now it has been a bit of a a three-way three-way split you know you have people of i'll believe it when i see it yeah to the people like i can't wait to the people like that gameplay looks terrible <laughs> so like that's the three-way split and what's interesting about it is i just think that now granted i'm actually in the other one where it's like it comes out it comes out yeah. yeah, I yeah. I I'm pretty sure people that listen to the show knows that like I wasn't on that seven train when it first came out, so I don't have that attachment to it. Attachment yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's plenty of games to play between now and then, anyway. Yeah, like to them, Final Fantasy is to me my Skies of Arcadia. Like my yeah. attachment, Ooh. that's my mm -hmm. attachment. So to me, that's gonna mean something more to me than probably anybody else. So, um, but I'm happy that it's still alive, I guess, in yeah. per se. But like. I am on the train up. I'll believe it when I see it because mm -hmm. it's taking way too long. But then again, 15 took so long. 
Yeah, and and honestly, I thought that fifteen was gonna. I thought this trailer was gonna come out something different. I thought it was not gonna be the one we saw. Cause it just took a long. I was like, maybe they started over again. So maybe we got something else. They, they might have started over again, considering since they kicked Cyber Connect out. Yeah, and, and kept everything in the house. Yeah, mm. not to mention, I mean, going back to fifteen, fifteen, they cut the legs out from under with all the DLC. So, it, and then oh yeah, also Kingdom Hearts was in the long. Yeah, Stall yeah, and they, and they had to spend time promoting that. I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic. They um, did change all their social media to seven theme stuff. Yeah, and that was kind of uh, preemptive to the release of Kingdom Hearts three. They did a social media swipe of their profiles and stuff to match Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, and and I mean the proof is in the proof is in the pudding. I would be surprised if they announced the remake coming out this fall, this winter. Oh no! Uh, I mean, I would be surprised if they. It's going to be a twenty twenty, hands down. Yeah, if they do like February twenty twenty, like they did with Kingdom Hearts three, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised. But ultimately, it comes down to, uh, they're po- they're trying to polish the game. They're trying to make sure it's nice and polished. I understand why they had to do that. The action, the Kingdom Hearts based combat. I'm actually going to. Sucks. I'm actually going to call this now. I'm going to do this. I think that Final Fantasy seven is going to come out twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. But I All think right. it's going to come to PS five. Ooh, that I'm gonna would say be a disaster. I'm gonna say it's gonna come out cross plat or uh, modify cross platform. Okay. It's gonna come out for okay. PS4, but people who have the PS5 is gonna have some built-in code. You can actually enhance it. They're gonna have some code in their back pocket yep. to throw out when you because PS5 is backwards compatible with the PS4. Boom. So it Curtis, if it um, was five only, there that would leave such a horrible taste in people's mouth. Yeah, it could be a it great launch. Launch. It'd be a great launch. launch. It'd be a great launch. It would be a great launch, but it couldn't launch it by itself. No. I'll, I don't know, dude. Final Fantasy VII is a pretty damn powerful game, dude. Yes, but not when it's episodic and broken up. So we don't know if it's episodic. And a $600 system if it's that high. Ooh. Ooh I, 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 don't think, heavy, I don't think they're going to pull another PS3. That's I don't know. I honestly think the episodic thing, I'm hoping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. hope this one. I'm going to hope that it is now going to be a full game, not going to be episodic. I I'll put it this way I I have a hard time believing that we'll be able to fit all, all of, of that. that story in there with all of those moments do justice to all of it keep it open world too yes and it still fit on one disc I okay wait a minute now there's been some games Grand Theft Auto Six did it uh, five five but, yes. this is gonna do it too oh, let's go through uh, that out yeah, yeah. So, look, 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 look it would be amazing though. look look and the funny part is. Remember Final Fan- I mean I mean Grand Theft Auto 5 was on the PS3 first. Yeah. Yes, Look how much yes. they put in nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did double dip. I got it for the 3 and the 4. And they did a tech Remember the tech demo? That game looked Final Fantasy 7 looked good on the PS3 tech demo. Yes, yeah. I, I, I think the full game could be on there. It could be. It could be, but it makes you wonder what would they what might they have to sacrifice. So, what I don't kind know. of shortcuts and I mean, stuff. What would be if they really want to blow me away? Put the full game on there and uh, the Advent Children movie that came out. Make a playable version of it. To tell you the truth, man, I have never. I maybe maybe I'm lost. I have never found a game yet where they said that this whole game couldn't fit on there with without the DLC. Like fifteen, fifteen. Now look, fifteen is pretty damn big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it also there are parts of it that seemed unfinished. I mean, I'm sorry. No, I'll give you that. But yeah. that open world. Yeah, it's pretty huge. It, w- it and was, let me, it was and, huge. And and I think it's bigger than Seven's World. I uh, dude, think about it. If they had that whole feel was just okay. Yuffie. <laughs> if they had added in the Niflheim Kingdom, which mm. I know they were going to do, but that would have pushed development time for like four more years. Yeah, then I would agree that map would have been bigger than. Okay. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The fact that when you go to the other place where you're supposed to. You know, Mary you, Luna Freya, or you, yeah, her, the the, the, Luna Freya. the lady, yeah, Luna Freya. That was supposed to be a whole nother continent to explore. Nope, not until well. So spoilers. you don't think now they might because that got cut out? Maybe you think I'll be added in? Well, uh, considering how they what for fi- Final Fantasy fifteen, considering how mm. they cut the legs out from the rest of the DLC and made it a book. Yeah, and uh, how the ending, how there was even another part of the ending that was supposed to happen okay. didn't happen. So it, that mm, I Final Fantasy 15 gives me feelings of uh, PT all over. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. I think I I think Sev. I have never met a game where so far that they said they could never fit a, a big game in there yet. Yeah, so they could fit it on there, but is it because to me is look, let's, let's look at the Final Fantasy right now at it. It okay. is not at its best, the highest best graphics you've ever seen yet. 
Come on. Correct. That's what I'm saying. If they keep it that way, I think the whole map can. And you're talking about sacrifice. Maybe it's not going to be graphically phenomenal. No, it's it not going to be. be it's not going to be graphic. Good. If the story. No, 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 no. We're talking about just like you're talking about the whole game can't fit in there. And I'm saying maybe the sacrifice could be the character the graphics could not be up to super par. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fair enough. Oh that, God, if they for, God forbid they actually say, okay, well you'll get this much if you do on PS4, PS5 you get all of this. Oh, oh man. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, I just put it out there in the universe too. But overall, um, we're supposed to hear more in June. Yes, yep. yes. So E3 we'll time. so we'll see what they have to say about that, um, and then we'll come back and we'll hear what Kurtz's final decision of the whole thing is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, um, but that wasn't the only thing that mm-hmm. was shown on the state of play. Um, mm-hmm. Riverbond, a, uh, a it, I call it an isometric Minecraft, but they have so many cameos from Shovel Knight, and Guacamole, and Bastion. So it it looks it looks kind of fun. Not not my bag, but it does look fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a, a game where you play what looks like you're playing like a sugar glider or something surviving in the wild called okay. Away. And uh, so it, it looks like it'd be interesting. Okay. It, interesting. So that's the state of play. It uh-huh. was it was nice. Okay. Um, some some bad news depending on where you stand. Uh, so you guys remember Panic Button Studio? Mm, they yes. uh, they did Doom, Wolfenstein, Warframe. They brought it to the Switch. Well, the studio head stepping down, uh, Adam Creighton, uh, Crichton, mm-hmm. and uh, rumor has it he might be going to Retro Studios, maybe help him out on some uh, some Metroid Four. So, that's that's exciting. So yeah, and um, lastly, uh, gamers get your pitchforks. Uh, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley is introducing legislation to ban loot boxes and pay to win microtransactions for a certain age remember right? directed to young yeah directed okay. to younger kids kids under 18 he likens it to gambling okay. but um i don't know what do you, do you guys think uh it'll have an effect on future games like you know ea activision take two they like their microtransactions no i don't think it'll make a difference they, no they might front load and make it you know instead of 60 dollars is a 70 dollar game now or there's a seven or sixty five dollar game, seventy five dollar game. Oh, you mean they'll put the whole the whole the whole thing in there without us more? Oh wow. Break I mean, my heart. It, <laughs> <laughs> or free to play online games like Fortnite going to online subs. I mean I can understand I guess I can, well, I can't speak for myself, but if I had to speak from the I don't really care. But yeah. I understand from their point of view of the micro transit. But at the same time, I mean they're not I I don't I don't know, man. I just I honestly don't care. I I I, I really don't like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Most of the time, it's these it's the parents that are giving these kids the money to do them and not knowing what's going on. Yeah. To, and I feel yeah. I feel like it's, it's I feel here's like here's my credit it, card and I shut no, up. I feel like we're fixing something that is totally the fault of people not paying attention. Yeah, that's uh, what yeah. I feel like. That's well, what I feel yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, I I see where, I see your point. It's one of those things of if there was a little bit more accountability or attention being paid, then there wouldn't be a market for this. There's a market for this because people keep buying into it. Right. It's like but, if I gave you if I gave you a quarter for the slot machine, <laughs> it's your move. It's my fault for giving you that quarter that got you into that world. Yeah. Yeah. Per se. Per yeah, se. That's an example. Time, kids, young kids, and this is they have an addict. They can have an addictive personality. They do. Mm-hmm. They do. You know. And it's like, oh, I got the latest, you know, emote for whatever. I got to get more. I got to get more. Uh, my, my own niece, I visited my niece uh, a couple weeks ago. She was playing Fortnite. She loves Fortnite. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it can, it can be, a, I can see it both ways. I think there should be, I mean, they say let the, let parents be accountable, but we got the ESRB, but don't then, we? But then the gaming industry needs to go back to maybe heavily focusing more on in-game currency instead of. I need this now money, give it to me kind mm-hmm. of lingo. Because Fortnite in, 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 uh, in-game currency, I don't think it exists. Uh, no, there's there's uh, in-game currency per- but that you buy with money. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like It should be a bonus. Like If you're number one, give me some in-game credit. That kind of thing. Uh, now, like, games like Overwatch. Apex Legends does that. Yeah, and Apex Legends is, is all cosmetic. Overwatch is all cosmetic. And yes. you can buy additional loot boxes, but you can also grind them out. At a decent amount, at a decent pace. Yes. And so something striking the balance of Overwatch, I'm down. I'm down. Mm-hmm. And their cosmetic items are actually fun. Yeah. Well, They're actually fun. That's what happens when we live. affect um, something like Magic Arena mm-hmm. or any trading card, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Duel Links. Because um, you're buying mystery packs, essentially. Yeah, but, I mean, we're talking about people who would do that on actual physical items. Yeah. Anyway, oh my goodness, that that's the true. reason I got out of playing Magic the Gathering, because right. that is so expensive. 
holy crap. Yeah. You know? And see, with the physical card game, you can buy singles. Dig- if you're playing digitally, you can't buy singles. Yeah, there's no gray market for there's that either. No, right. There's no There's no outside yeah. market. And it's not taking up space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When someone takes up space, then you know, like, maybe I have a problem. Yeah, well, well like I said, <laughs> I'm a hoarder. It's so expensive. It's so expensive I almost... Hell, I almost could have had me turn in tricks just to get the next booster <laughs> well, pack. <laughs> well, just to wrap it up, uh, I don't know how much efe- how much effect this is going to really do. I mm-hmm. think I think it's still going to continue on, but at the same time, we're in a generation where people want this stuff now instead True. of yeah. later. But that's also what it, it, will it, not stop it, companies from raising prices too. Yeah, but at the same time, I guess that is more towards the kids and the parents that want to make the decision to pay that much. True. Vote with your wallet. True, if it's 70 true. bucks and you don't buy it and it's not worth it, then they might have to bring it back down. You have to vote well, for your wallet. But that's the issue, Jerron. As I talk to my friend Jerome all the time, I, th- I know too many J's with Jer in the beginning, um, <laughs> is that there's too many of casual people that don't know this that outweigh the people that should know better. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's the problem going across many different Parent, genres. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're right. Basically a little bit of, in every category because parents – that don't play games or don't keep up with that, don't know, they only going to go trust by, the kid wants this, I'll get it for him. Yeah. But I yeah. didn't know I was supporting an addiction because mm-hmm. it, the game's supposed to be fun. Exactly. You don't, you don't, oh, it's bright colors, oh, that's goofy. Okay, well, here's my credit card. Go ahead, buy you some B-Bucks. Right. You know. <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be different down the line when our generation gets a little bit older because mm-hmm. now we're in that we know we know this stuff like no i've been around that era i know what this does okay yeah. i mean but... i don't care if your ps6 can walk <laughs> and go and, and drive you to the store you're not doing it <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, not just, it's not just games like fortnite or apex legends i mean we gotta remember we got nba 2k games you have those mm. those packs you got yeah uh you know fifa you got madden, the, the madden yeah. battlefront 2 a couple years ago that went through that kicked a lot of this stuff off yeah well, let's just, well i'm gonna sit back and see what happens and yeah. see if it makes difference. Yeah, speaking of possible, you know, microtransactions, uh, new Ghost Recon game. Yes. Uh, Breakpoint, I believe it is, from yes. the continuation of Wildlands, which I, I lied. That's one other game I was playing. I'm playing with John with Wildlands, actually. We played uh. on Wednesdays. I knew there was something I forgot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Wildlands I'm playing. Um, it's okay. This one looks crap. You know, gets my eye a little bit more because it feels like they're going back to the futuristic. Wildlands is cool, but I'm kind of done with the drug cartels kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know, and everything like that. Um, but this one is a little bit different because it's set in the kind of in the middle, little mid future. I think a little bit past Wildlands time, which I don't even know what time Wildland was. But it's kind um, of near future, near, right, right. Near but future. it's set more in a kind of like a, a acapello island kind of kind of land or something, which that's really cool. And it looks like there's an organization going after the main cast, which I hope you can still customize because I don't, I don't think the main character looks really cool. I, I hope I can you don't make like him. the Viking beard. No, nah, I'm not feeling that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not feeling that right now. But I just hope you can still customize. It's still yeah. four players. It comes out October fourth. Uh, main actor from The Punisher and uh, Walking Ball and Walking Dead and as Walking Dead, Shane. Yep. And so, um, yeah, John. John Bernthal. Yeah, Bernthal. Perpet- he he, looks he like a perpetual a hole. Yeah, he is probably the, he's an antagonist. But what got me is. I hate that villains look so cool, and I want their outfits. Like, I want that outfit. Can I get that outfit? Yeah. Like, can I be the? I want to be the bad guys going after good guys. How about a game like that one? I mean, you could either have great fashion sense and you know malevolence, or you could be good and win. Right. Um. So, but one of the one of the most important ones that they mention is yes, it's coming out on all consoles. And it's funny too because like on the on the poster it says PS4 and PS4 Pro, so I think it's pretty funny that they've uh, established uh-huh. that now. So that's yeah. hilarious. Um, but uh, Epic Store will be the only one that will have that game not coming to Steam. Huh? So really, Ubi, they Epic Store is working with Ubisoft, no UPlay Store. Holy crap! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we can. You heard it here first, folks. The uh, the the platform wars are officially underway. I can't wait. I really want to do a war room segment, which I I miss doing about the Steam versus Epic. We're not quite there yet. I still want to see what Epic's going to pull up, but I would love to sit and talk about like what you know the difference is. What are they doing? Yeah. What's the future of them? Because yeah. Epic is putting some work in, man. Yeah, they are they're grabbing playing. exclusives. They are grabbing. It's like, hey, they're offering you uh uh thir- you know thirty forty. Or thirty percent, seventy. Yeah. yeah, we'll do uh forty sixty. Come to us, and they're they're, they're just yeah. reaching into Steam's pocket over yeah. and over and over. 
Valve sitting on their laurels. Right. That, that, that's why. The reason any competition comes up is when the big dog just coasts, mm-hmm. relax yeah. and coasts. Okay. You know? So you see it with uh, WWE and AEW. Sorry, look, look, yeah, I'm a wrestling nut. <laughs> but I so will soon. say, but I will say this about Ghost Recon, and I talked about Kurt, Curtis with this is when they do these demos of showing you this whole gameplay, <laughs> yeah, and it, you know it's scripted, Looks beautiful, yeah, it's yeah, it's beautiful. One, we people are already assuming that I can't wait to play the downgrade version of this, yeah. Uh, yeah. Two, um, it comes to the question of is how can you present a game that it still looks great? But it's not scripted. It's so hard. I feel like you have to have a game that's scripted. But at the same time, you 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 look at it and you're like, I know it's not going to be the way I play it. Exactly. I know when I play with my friends, we're not going to have it like that. No, Maybe that's just a personal your thing. Your aim's not going to be that great all the time. <laughs> Maybe this is, it's just a personal thing for gamers. It's just more yeah. like, I'm never going to get that. It's cool that they did that. But, but then again, I don't want to sit there and watch – a bunch of people bumbling, messing up this mission either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's what a let's then, plays for. Yeah, but then at the same time, it's more of like I, I don't want to get this game. Like you got to make it appeal. Yeah. So like I understand the script, but I don't know. Maybe just the trailer is enough for me. Well, well, I liken it to um, you see those commercials, those food commercials, fast food commercials. The burgers look wonderful and juicy and and, and everything like that. And you get the actual burger, and you're like. No, that's not the same. You know, it's it's, it's pretty much the same thing. They yeah. gotta wet your appetite. They gotta get you. They gotta get so you. So what excited. you're saying? So you're saying is, I want, I need a girl on a car, <laughs> <laughs> holding I mean, the holding the game up. I mean, you know, you and wait then she's the next, holding up the gun. Wait for the next Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm sure and then she it. looks at the screen and says, "I'm going ghosts." And then she just camouflage and goes. Is that, that what you're saying? I mean, I didn't say that, but that would be interesting. I mean, I, I mean, you can go throw your Carl's Jr. on it all you want. Let's take a break. <laughs> and when we, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to get into a fun segment. Plus, take a trip to uh, Gotham City and check out a game that's been uh, an anniversary for 10 years. We'll talk about that. We'll be right back. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode as part of the End Game Boss Program, a network of gaming and other variety shows. And remember, you can find all these shows on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean. All you have to do is just follow and subscribe and enjoy all our other variety shows. Like the Endgame Boss Podcast, When Jeremy Met Nam, and Finally Do a Movie Podcast, Bond Never Dies, in the Cabinet Sessions. So thank you for listening. Enjoy the rest of the show. Hi, if you love video games and you love video game icons or characters, then please walk down the gaming halls of rivalries with us as we go through two iconic characters that rival each other in the gaming industry. Gaming characters like Mario and Sonic, or Laura Croft and Nathan Drake, or like Dante and Bayonetta, and Master Chief and Samus. If you enjoy these characters, then please visit the Gaming Halls of Rivalries as part of the in-game boss program and enjoy fun information and fun stories and the future of these characters. Thank you. And welcome back to the in-game boss podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Evans with John Williams. Hey, hey, hey. Curtisism. Hello. No special guests. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. So we have another special segment, but... I want to talk to the listeners for for a minute here. So, you know, when you think of in your head, who do you think is the most popular swordsman? I want you guys to think really, really hard. Who do you think? Video it is? game swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video, video games. Good, good way to put that. Now, picture him green, because you don't have a choice now. I want you to picture him green. Okay. <laughs> so basically, what I'm saying is, Link is probably to a lot of people's minds, and is in your mind now. And I'm telling you this is uh, Link is probably one of the most popular swordsmen out there. Uh, rather you are a casual person or not, Zelda to me is one of the most popular, probably the popular one because he has been promoted the most to me. People know probably him off the top of his head. As like, let me put it like this: he might not be number one to you, mm-hmm. but he's always going to be in your top five. Yeah, <laughs> well known, regardless the situation is. I'd say knee jerk like. Oh, that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like everybody knows who he who he is. And there's been games based on the formula of Link. All this stuff. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know? And I think other than any other I want to say other than Mario, I think Link has been in the most other type of games. Um, I 
Things? I don't Maybe know. Mega Man. Sonic? No, we're talking about uh, the Nintendo, oh. Mega Man's oh. Capcom. We're talking about and uh, like the Nintendo. Oh, just oh okay. Nintendo. Sorry, okay. yeah, sorry. Let me put it that way. Like other than Mario and the Nintendo family, Link, I think has been in the second most. I would agree with that. crossover yeah. games yeah. of anything. Oh, crossover I mean, games? Yeah. Yeah, using Crypt of the Necromancer, the the, the DLC with the Link. So Caliber. So yes. Caliber. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's. I mean, he's even gotten to the Musu arena with the Hyrule Warriors. Yep. Yeah. There yeah. was a nice back and forth between Square and stuff. Um. That they had a link mentioned in the dra- old Dragon Quest game, and there you go. Link, um, what was it? Link's the uh, second one. Oh, Adventure of Link. Adventure or? of Link had yeah. a. And watch, it'll be a, a a Zelda Cross Fire Emblem. I'm calling it. I mean, it wouldn't be too far off. <laughs> I mean, I can see Link jumping in that world. He could be a bonus mm-hmm. character for just S and you know S and G. So yeah, but yeah, I mean, Ganon crossed over, or Ganon's costume crossed over with Diablo three on the Switch. Yep. So. Didn't Bayonetta have a Link costume? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, but Link doesn't deserve all the credit. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of other sources out there. Now, of course, you know, you'd be thinking like, you know, Cloud and all those people. Those are popular <laughs> sources and people. Yeah, of course. But what about some characters that's like, you know what? I did the same stuff. Why do I not get credit? I got a sword. I saved people. I saved the world one time. <laughs> like, why do I not get the credit for it? So for this special segment for you listeners out there, if you are a Zelda fan, you will enjoy this even more because this segment is called Screw You Link, I Got a Sword Too. <laughs> oh. So so there's a, a character I'm going to be talking about is a swordsman that not only traveled the lands and saved the world, he actually changed times. If people are not understanding yet, knowing, but I'll continue. He has saved the times of many places. He has gone to the future. He has gone to prehistoric. He has gone to the past. He has done it all. And he can save the world any way you want. And the funny part is there's over, I want to say over 20, 30 endings to this ending, mm-hmm. this game, this character can do. <laughs> and that's Chrono for a Chrono Trigger. Not Chrono Cross because Chrono Cross didn't have a sword. He had one of those, like, spears, like, those yeah, long like, stick staff with the yeah, blade on it. Yeah, swallow blade. Yeah, yeah, one of those or something like that. But Chrono, Chrono was a character that didn't know he was going to be a hero. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Here's the kid that, as you play the beginning, you didn't know you were doing bad things. <laughs> yep. Until they pointed out to you. That was so interesting about that game that, like, the game remember all the decisions you made. Like, this guy, you, like, in court. Like, this guy did this and this and this. Like, Oh, damn, maybe I did. Man, I just went to the fair, guys. <laughs> they offered it to me. But the funny part is, like, yeah, they offered it to me, but I didn't pay for it. And it's like, oh, I didn't, did I? I was like, oh, oh. I feel bad. But he, but he said, you made it sound like it was free, you know? Like, I, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to help that girl find the kitten. Whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And so, but later on, when he gets this ability to change time along with uh, a girl that was a that was a princess, I believe she ran away from the castle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, we had a scientist girl. Oh yeah, that Luca. looks like um, like Doctor Slump's manga. Yep. <laughs> if anybody knows what that one is, and then later on, meets a frog that's going after one of the one of the most evil villains in in the Square Enix library that people forget. I think is Magus. Ma- yeah, Magus. Magus. Yeah. Which surprisingly, I didn't know till like my second or third playthrough is the fact that he can join your your group if you do the right things. Didn't know that. That's awesome. <laughs> but back to Chrono. Um, so if people don't know, Chrono is 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 another word for, you know, time. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. chronology, right? So when he got these abilities to save different times, he was managing to save the world based on the decision whose allies are with. And that game was not short. That game was long. Yeah. Yeah. And it was almost a puzzle itself because you had to go back to a certain time to get this event to go. Yeah. And then that game progressed to later on cutscenes. Which the cutscenes were cool, and it was cre- the artwork was created by Akira Toriyama, Toriyama. Yep. the people that you know DBZ, Dragon, yeah. uh, Dragon Quest, anything with a dragon, and he probably touched it or something. Blue like Dragon that. too. <laughs> see, yes, yes, <laughs> and see, uh, but very distinctive art style. But I think he deserves to be recognized because and mentioned, the, yeah, yeah, I mentioned because he had a so- now people are gonna say. Chrono's mentioned all the time and all this. And no, no, no. The game has been mentioned many times. Yeah. But Chrono himself has not been mentioned many times. Yeah. The man he, died and still saved the world. Right. Right. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that he has brought allies from different times to help save the world, yes. that's insane. Now, 
Link has done that with Ocarina of Time. We've seen this before. Mm -hmm. He plays songs at the time. But we never seen Link go to a futuristic world or back to, you know, the land before time. Not the movie. But, you know. <laughs> the time the period. <laughs> right. Yeah. But Link has never, ever done that before. No. But Chrono has. Any input you guys want to have on Chrono? Uh, no, I mean, you know, he, like Link, he's also a silent protagonist. Okay. Uh, like Link, he's uh, always waking up late for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no, I mean he he definitely and he definitely knows how to use that sword, the that that katana. Mm -hmm. So uh, and no. he knows how to work with people. Yeah. When you did those combos with yeah, people, that yeah. was awesome. That was very revolutionary. That combat system. Yes. Tech system. Yeah. Yes, that mm -hmm. was the that was one of the real ones where if you walk away, your character can die. Yeah. Because it was active turn base. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. sorry. You could. I think you could change it later, right? Like, was it beginning? You, can you change it? You could switch it. Okay. Right. Okay. But by default, it was active yes. time battle system. Yes. So I mean, and you know that Square was playing around. That was around the time Square was playing around with it with their Final Fantasy games as well. Right. You know, but uh, yeah, it it was. I don't know. Chrono Chrono knew his way. He, sword magic, and he had that 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 silent protagonist charisma. So right. And uh, Curtis, anything you want to put in there? No, that's about it. So, uh, so for the listeners, if you think that Chrono deserves a spotlight to say, screw you, Link, I put my share into this, and I don't know why I don't have many more entries into my series. <laughs> but what are your picks? You let me know, and if we like your picks, then we'll talk about it when it comes back again but we have there's tons of heroes with swords and there is some down <laughs> below that people forget that this game is like that was a game at one point you know so i can't wait to bring that out and talk about some of these characters and talk about these classic games that people just don't remember and mm -hmm. we'll talk about some popular characters of course yes, yes. but at the same time this is more looking out for the little guy to tell him screw you link i got a sword too and i also saved the world also so <laughs> excellent batman this is what we came for. No, no, this no, is what no, the no, title no, no, has. No. <laughs> Batman. We all love Batman. We love the comics. We love the movies. Yep. You know. The te television series. DC. Yes. Out of probably, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you right now, out of all the DC heroes, I think Batman is still the most popular one. Out of, every, out of all of them, Justice League is still the favorite. Who knew Guy With Money can be the most popular one, right? He I bought mean, his way to being awesome. Money is a superpower. Some people say no. Money is a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think also too because he's, he's the most human. Yeah. yeah, character, and you can you, he's easy the one you could connect to more. <laughs> and that bullets can kill him. <laughs> That's true too. That's yeah. true too. No, he's he's the most grounded. I mean, he is a grounded Earthbound hero. So he, mm -hmm. he keeps. He keeps the rest of the meta humans in check by mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, yeah, that's great. You can do this and the other, but uh, and, humans can't." It is crazy because to this day, he still has other than. And the only reason I say Superman, because I think Superman, without the villains that he had, he wouldn't be Superman. But Batman was so good that even the villains were good, too. Yes. Well, yeah, he has one of the most memorable, memorable rogues gallery. Yeah. Yes, yes. He, he, I mean, his rogues gallery is a, could be a drinking game in and of itself of categories. Yes. Yes, and Batman villains. It's like, what's so interesting around about around. all the villains is they're a dark reflection of what he could be. Yes. Yeah, in a sense, and it's yes. crazy too because even the one-off ones are still popular than some Calendar of the main ones. <laughs> <Mustard Man. laughs> um, no, but I agree with that whole dark reflection. I mean, it's basically each all, all, a lot of the villains reflect a certain level of fanaticism. Riddler's mm -hmm. his uh, intelligence. Yes, Harvey yes. Dent is going too far, taking the law into your hands. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Joker is just consumed by. Joker's in love with Batman. Yep. Yeah, Joker's in love with Batman. And Joker does not want to share Batman with anybody else, hence death. In the but family. also, too, he likes to try to push Batman to a limit. To show to that limit. everybody yeah. has. Can be broke. Yeah, everybody yeah. can be broke. Yeah, yeah. And that's why he's fascinated with Batman. He's like, well, I, can't, I can't do it. Right. But mainly we're talking about Batman is because, let's be honest here, at the beginning of the time when Batman is popular, the game road for him the road mm -hmm. the path of his gaming has not been the best it has been some ups and a lot of downs yeah. uh, it, it, it sucked <laughs> I, yeah i would just say sunsoft batman it's kind of sucked right there were some batmans that were based on the animated show there were some batman based yeah. on the movies yeah and, the, uh, and i think we all agree the movies were not the best ones of Bat course batman returns but that was the only way people that's the only way they thought but batman back final in fight <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right um <laughs> But, you know, all this, and when I saw the Batman come out 
for the PS for the PS3 for the first time. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I skipped it. Oh, it, Arkham. Yeah. Ba- Arkham. Yeah, Asylum. yeah, yeah. I skipped it. And this is what we're. This is the game we're going to be talking about uh, because Batman came out. I think August fifteenth, two thousand and fifteen. I want to say. Uh, let's see. Yeah, August August twenty fifth, two thousand nine. I apologize. Yeah. That's Arkham Knight. Arkham mm-hmm. Knight came out in fifteen. Um, so. As you know, this is the 10-year anniversary of Arkham Knight. Yes. Not the exact date, but I want to go and talk about this early because, you know, our based on the schedule, we're not going to be laying on the time for that. So yeah. I want to talk about it now. 10 years ago, Arkham Asylum came out. Yeah, and it's been five years. No, four, four years. years since Arkham Knight. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Arkham City, we don't even, I don't, Arkham City is good. I just don't care about the date because we, we know it's, it's, it's around like <laughs> seven, eight years. Anyways. When I first saw, and we're going to talk about Arkham Side before we talk about what the main topic is, okay. but when Arkham Silent came out, I totally skipped it because Batman just had a bad record. That was like, mm-hmm. this is not going to be that good. And Rocksteady and, Ooh, and Warner Brothers, like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Who's how, like, this? Yeah. yeah, I don't feel yeah. it. Because, like, think about it. Like, the last superhero games that came out came out of Marvel side. Yeah. Yes. And then the Superman was in that long oh, line of bad games for a while before yes. another Batman game Superman come along. 64. Superman Returns. Yeah, and then I forgot Batman uh, based on the the first Batman movie. Uh, Batman Begins. Yeah. They never did yeah. one for Dark Knight Batman game, I don't think. Yeah. But yeah, Batman Begins, that was like, I think the last Batman movie game they movie did. Movie license yeah. game. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So like when this Batman came out, like I personally kind of skipped over it. I didn't care. But when I saw the reviews on it, and not like seven and six, like they were getting like nines and eights. I think one gave it a 10 at one point. Yes. It was more like, okay, I can't ignore it. I have to at least give it a try. And I gave it a try, and it was a phenomenal game. It was was phenomenal because it was not based on the game. No. It was based on – a story that they kind of created, but based on stories on a comic book. Yes, and I think that was awesome how they did that. And it was I, what I liked about it. It was me against the world in this jail cell world I mean, in the yeah. Arkham. Yeah, it and that's what made it so good. And it gave him the freedom to tell story to tell to flex with. You how weren't bound work. to a movie license. You weren't bound yeah, no to canon. a timetable. Yeah. Right, right. I got to do it kind of like my way. It had a bit of a Metroid kind of feel, where you know. You're looking for you're get, you, you can't do stuff without, without certain upgrades. You have to wait till you get certain upgrades. But the way they did the upgrades was you had to then go find it. He only summoned it when he needed it. Yeah, that was interesting about it. That's what I really liked that one, and I liked the fact that we were going after all these villains kind of one by one. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. Starting with Za, it was Zas, <laughs> and and then we're learning as we're beating these enemies. Yeah, a larger yeah a larger plot. Threat. Yeah, and yeah. the fact that like the stealth was awesome. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean. Batman's known for Vince. All right. But yeah. that was cool that you did that. But I think the highlight, the two highlight things was, one, was when you're in the room and you are doing your stealth where you have to try to knock everybody out without getting really caught. Yeah. You yeah. know, you're getting on, you're Batman, but you're like up high. Yeah. You're waiting for the Crawling right moment. So many Vince. gargoyles. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the last, and the second one, the most important one is the fighting. The yes. bat, the the whole like you've seen it in action movies, you know, jumping over people. That was the first time, first Batman game I ever felt really powerful. Yeah. You look at 15 guys, he's like, you're done, you're done, and you're done, because I'm the friggin' Batman. Right. Exactly, exactly. It it was, and it was smooth to where anyone can jump in and learn it. It's easy to learn, hard to master. Yep. Thank you. It was very accessible. It was very accessible. Yeah. You, You do a section, you know, that's why they had challenge sections in later games. It's like... I could do that better. I could do that better. And you felt yeah. like a martial artist because of the counter button. And yes. Like, they always killed me on the Super Nintendo all the way back to the older Batman games. Batman is an expert martial artist. Then why am I getting hit? Why? Can't... By thugs. By, by right. snatchers. And I got taken out by a random thug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't remember Pookie the first <laughs> snatcher being a black belt. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And I, I love the fact that you hear the conversations of the the, the thugs talking while they're fighting. I'm like, there he is. Get him. Yeah. You got to let him hit you like that. You know, <laughs> I, like it's, they do a lot of cool small things in there, especially like when you're you knock out in the, during the uh, I don't what would you call that mode? Like, is it stealth mode? Basically? Stealth mode. Yep. Yeah. Stealth mode. Uh, pr- uh, predator. Predator mode. mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Predator. That's that's a better one. Yeah. Predator mode where you're knocking them out. I love it because they're like, you know, you have Joker in the intercom. Is like, are you guys serious? There's a guy over there that's knocked out. 
<laughs> what are you gonna do? And, yeah, and they're like, they're touch. like, and I love the fact that they, they, um, their behavior changed too. Because as I like you started, because you turn on detective mode, they're so at the beginning, calm, everything's fine, no heartbeats, normal. Yeah. You start taking guy one after another after another. Start they start the text. Jeremy said the the talking conversation. I said, hey, screw you, man. I'm going over here. Everyone for himself, and you can see their heartbeat just yeah. boom, right, boom, right. boom, 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 boom. Some of them will go back to back. Like, dude, you got my back. I got your back, and they're walking back to back to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it teaches you to think outside the box. Like, you, maybe I have to go under the van. Maybe I have to shoot my batarang. Maybe set when up they come traps. At, yeah, maybe when I get when they come to the gargoyle, I can hang them up down but the cool part about it is that like later on in the series of course you know they changed where they got smarter like technology came where now they can scan and all that fun yes. but oh let me go guys. on the writing um what really stood up so unlike jeremy who kind of ignored it i heard the voice actor i was like, i think that's kevin conroy i think yeah. that's mark hamill <laughs> and then i really did research and before yes. i even did any more research i was like games are like i want to put Thirty dollars down on this right now. Yeah, and well, the storytelling—they brought in the animated series writers exactly yeah. to do it. They and that's why consistency. It, and it felt like the animators because they even had the original actress for Harley Quinn in the first one. Yeah, then she got a, then she got too expensive for the second yeah. game. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, it definitely felt. I loved. I've loved Batman. I love the animated series. So I was there from day one uh. and. You create, create the predator mode, the fighting, recreated a lot of the, Tim, it's like, man, these guys really like the Tim Burton movies. These guys really exactly. like the Nolan films mm -hmm. and you perfectly mwah, yes. put it in. I like, love the, controller. the interviews, the, those, oh, the I, tapes. I got them because I want to hear the conversation, <laughs> not because I had to. Well, that right. Before it started getting pretty contrived, before you started having Bioshock do it in this game, in this game. Yeah, this game, but it makes sense for Batman, though. Exactly. It made perfect sense for Batman. Yeah. And just hearing these these classic conversations of like what their time was in the Arkham, and that was really, really yeah. cool. And so, and some of the boss fights, now don't get me wrong, some of the boss fights were a little lackluster. Okay. Yeah. They were a little bit. Like, the Bane fight was cool, but um, it, it got old really quick because most of the time, it's always the more goons that give you the trouble, not the boss fight itself. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, mm -mm. Batman is familiar with all of his foes, so he knows, how, you know, countermeasures take him on anyway. That's, right. That's kind of how I explained it away in my head. I was like, okay. you know, he, yeah. he knows how Bane is. He knows how Poison Ivy is. He knows how yeah. Killer Croc is. Or, you know, he knows how yeah. these folks are. Yeah, so, yeah. But, yeah, it's, not, it's never a matter of if. It's a matter of when he will beat you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and then just, uh, I think the best part of all to me was the tour of the place. Like, you, it wasn't like one building and you're working right. Like, you're going, it's a, it's basically almost like a park. Yeah. Yes. You're going from building to building. You're going back and forth. What was it? Five major buildings you went yeah. into? Yeah. Yeah. And you're not, and you're not, sometimes what you thought you're not coming back to, you're coming back because there's another room you didn't know exists. Yeah, a little shortcut that takes you right there. And you have here. a gadget now to navigate through. Right. Yeah. And then you figure out there's another level when you had to go fight Killer Croc. Yep. You're like, yes. I'm going down underground to fight this guy. And Killer Croc, I know a lot of people get annoyed by that fight, but I like that fight a lot because that was a fight that you're not meant to win. Yeah. Per se. Like, you're supposed to get there and get out. And that's the fight I really like. Mm -hmm. It wasn't more like, my goal is just to beat you down. So yep. Batman did a good job of kind of changing that up a little bit, per se. Yeah. Batman mm -hmm. so, knows when he's outmatched brawn-wise. Mm -hmm. you know? And then we get to the city, which is probably a lot of people's favorite entry. Actually, out of all three, I think Arkham Asylum is my favorite out of all of them. Okay. Uh, but, like, then we get to the city. And we're not going to stay too long with this because, you know, we're, we're, running, we're running a little time. We need to get into what we're going to talk about. Uh, but... Open world. Yeah, open world, half of open world, really. Yeah. Like, they, they took half of Arkham, yeah. and it was run by Doctor Strange, and that there, it fit well for Batman, because Batman, people want Batman to roam into the yeah. city. We wanted that. Dr. Hugo Strange, for those who have Yeah, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Dr. Hugo Strange. And it made sense for him what he wanted to do there, and it was cool that Batman had to kind of get captured to get into this realm. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that I think a lot of the characters that didn't get a chance to shine got to shine in this one. Like, yeah. people ask, where's Mr. Freeze? Here's Mr. Freeze this time. Here's Penguin. Here's the Catwoman. Penguin. Yeah. Two, I two missed face. I, I yeah. wanted Penguin in the first one. That would have been icing on the cake because yeah, I like the Penguin a lot. Penguin, you've never known him to be a person in Arkham Asylum because he's not he, – he tries to keep a, uh, his, crimin, his criminal enterprise, he tries to keep a, a front. That's true. Mm -hmm. so, That's true. That's true. Know, that's so true. That, and, and, you know, also when you said it was based, you know, Arkham Asylum itself, it was loosely based on that uh, 
I think it was a Grant Morrison comic book. Darker okay. than uh, uh, Dark no, Nightfall was, is it? This no, I think it was just, no Nightfall's was, the Bane one. I think yeah. it was just Arkham Asylum. It came out in like the early yeah, 90s okay, and yeah, yeah. had an interesting little, like a watercolor paint style. Okay, that Batman was trapped in Arkham Asylum with all these villains. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was. But Arkham City, yes, I, Arkham City actually was my. I actually enjoyed that out of the trilogy. Okay, the Rock City trilogy. And that's a lot of people, and I completely understand it. But me going second playthrough, I realized like, man, I I, I guess my my taste change. Because Arkham, Arkham Asylum was just a good bounce for me. It, Arkham it's a good was intimate introduction. Yeah, Arkham was very contained. The Arkham yes. Asylum was very yeah. contained. Arkham City, I get where you're. you're very overwhelming. Just uh, I, I can't even so do this to do right now. All the Riddler icons, all the weird. Yeah, I did not like those Riddler yeah, things I, for the life of me. I'm not a col- I'm not a collector. I'm not yeah. a icon person. Right, but I did like. The, I still like the story in Arkham City. It was a yep. good story, especially like one of my favorite scenes is when you have to climb up to the giant tower to go get Hugo Strange. That was one of my favorite parts. Yeah, and that was and, great. Yeah, it makes you think. Okay, well, this is it. It's like no, there's a bigger. And story. I love the twist on the Joker. Yeah, yes. I love a twist on there. Yes. So, and then you have Arkham Knight, which Arkham Knight had a great trailer and everything. It's still a great game. I just, I guess, I didn't like the fact it was a rehash story of the Red Hood. Yeah. Okay. It was. That's it. Gameplay's awesome. Everything was good about it. The detective mode was at its best in I, that one. You but just the saw fact. It coming. Yeah, that's way. the problem. Was like, okay, it's Red Hood again. The it's one a- thing that saved that for me was the Joker hallucinations. That was good because yes. that was completely hidden at every E3 trailer, every marketing. Yeah. That was completely hidden. Exactly. And smartly edited. And I love the if if you notice because you're under the the hallucinations signs will change before you like you'll look away mm. there's this I guy and you a girl about. and then you look away look back and it's like the joker and yeah. he's like strangling her or something yeah yeah, really yeah. cool little touches just attention to detail yep. too much car but it was still good. yeah i i was not digging those batmobile missions or of bat tank <laughs> yeah I, I was like no no i'm not digging it was cool you could call your car at any point and yeah. go anywhere or at, or if you master the gliding, you can glide places just as fast. Or it faster. broke my immersion. Like, When did Edward Nigma have time, money to build these elaborate racetracks? <laughs> Gosh, I know, right? I mean, he watched Fast and the Furious. He, he said, I could do that. I'm um, smarter than them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the man bat. When uh, the man bat. Those were those were good jumps. Those were awesome. Yeah. 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 It was so random. You climbing up, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. But it was. I think the tour of Ark, the Ark of Night, was better than City to me because okay. you were going from like to the air balloons up in the sky. You actually like they force you to go to like, a lot of places yeah. that you normally didn't think you were going to be going. Yeah. yeah. And so They're like, how can we top Arkham City? Okay, we got to open up all of Gotham now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and I, I think I, the best improvement for the fighting too. The, they yeah. really did some really good stuff on that fight, especially when you start adding in where you can fight with Robin. Yeah, and you do double team moves, and yeah. yeah, that was fun. Yeah. By the way, Arkham City, I did not like the Catwoman parts. They were annoying. I, I, I teach them. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't. I haven't played it in a while, so I can't yeah. really. I can't it's really it's so interesting when you go back to a game. Like years down the line, just see like you know, hmm, yeah. Why did I like this game? Or yeah. why did I get? I this? loved the improvement of the multiple, triple counters or double counters yeah. that oh, was yeah. introduced. Yeah, if you can't press counter at the right time. You're like, pop, pop, bam, their heads together. I right. love it. So, like I said, it's been ten years since Arkham Knight. It's been five years since. Or, oh, sorry, sorry. It's been ten years since Asylum. Five years since Arkham Knight. It's twenty twenty coming up soon. I believe that a new Batman game, or maybe this E3, a Batman game is going to get announced. I think it's time for a new Batman game. Curtis was talking. To, Curtis said to me, "How are you, we going to make a game that be that can surpass or even continue what Rock City left behind?" And that's where this episode comes in. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about what we want from the next Batman game. If it's now, we're not talking about it's going what date we're coming out. Right. But I'm just having my prediction. If it's what 2020, this are we is stuff we hope. Are we saying it's still developed by Rocksteady, or it can be developed? Not, by not, anybody? not the developer's not important to me. Okay, yep. good. Not good. the developer. It's more of like what we want to see the next Batman go, the okay. next path to you. Now, one half of the success of Arkham was Rocksteady never seemed like a destroy it all. They just built upon it. Yeah. yeah, I think a strong foundation is take what was in Arkham Knight and just build upon that. Yeah, because you had Arkham Asylum that went to the city and then it continued in the city. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they just kept adding on and continuing that. 
So that's I think that's what you're you're yep. implying. Yeah. So before I get into my guy, I have some I have some stuff to say. What do you guys would like to see like the next Batman go next? What's the next path for Batman? Do you I... want do you want it to continue with Rocksteady has or do you want to start something brand new? What So starting with Rocksteady's foundation, I would just build upon that. I okay. what one thing I wanted more aspect and focus on was how smart of an investigator he was. And they really tried with Arkham Knight. They actually gave you crime scenes. Okay. I actually want some crime scenes where if you miss something, that actually might affect a detail. Okay. Or okay. something. Okay. Right. So or you might jump to the wrong tale. conclusion. Yeah. Just 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 a pinch of that. Okay. Um cause it very felt like you're not leaving this area until you find everything. And that kind of took me out of the immersion mm-hmm. of Batman is only human. He does make mistakes. If you ever yeah. watch the animated series, oh my gosh, he has yeah. made mistakes. But very rarely. Very rarely. <laughs> but you need to have that possibility of, oh, I don't know why I didn't see that. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I think, um, and it's really hard because our minds are all, always going to be tainted by just the sheer yeah. perfection of the combat system. Mm-hmm. You know, and when you think Batman, you think, yeah, world's greatest detective, but he also breaks bones he's hospital he's put guys in traction so i think if i were doing another batman game i would want a good portion of investigation like like curtis said but mm-hmm. i would also want I, I would want a little bit more of the i'm not saying grand theft auto but more of the open world kind of like spider-man where you could just okay. be going and doing your own thing but i was wondering if someone's gonna mention it. spider-man i was yeah, waiting for somebody Spider-Man, to say that because spider-man you know just took what roxay did and then put their own spin on yeah. it. yeah so if you did batman you know batman does goes on on patrol you know he does he goes out on patrol unless he's chasing down a particular mission uh-huh. i'd like to see you know sometimes you're going on patrol there's something going on. You go down, you stop it. And they kind of did a little bit in Arkham City, right? Per se, you know. Yeah, a you little know, bit, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, not, but I know exactly what you're talking about. You wanted me more like this is a normal day, not because yes. this site is this corrupt. This huge yes. event I want, is like, yeah. a, a week in the life of Batman or, or two weeks in the life Batman of Batman. Batman day one? You want that Batman day one? I, I would <laughs> actually, you know what? On top of that, I want, because everybody says, oh, he's such a solitary person. He's got like five, six different sidekicks. He's got yeah. like oh, how, three or four Robins, two Batgirls, a Batwoman. You know, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them tastefully incorporate. Occasionally, he's running a mission with this Robin, or okay. occasionally he's running. You know, he's saving Batwoman from something or whatever like that. Okay, you, know, you can you can acknowledge. I'd like to see more acknowledgement that he's he's not necessarily alone. He's a loner, but he's not alone. Okay, so. Uh, but maybe yeah. incorporate another DC hero because Superman yes. exists in that in the Arkham Knight world. Yes, I was thinking of, I was tip, I was tilting that around in my head. I was like, I love to see, excuse me, I love to see some more team ups. Mm-hmm. You know, hell, I don't do want it. Superman near this. Heck, I, I think if they then did it I would right, ground it with Wonder Woman instead. Yeah, they could do a, a little modified Justice League um, with this, dude. But I don't know why. Superman out of it. Or I don't know why, Arrow. man. I would like Justice League not to be part of it. I'd rather get some like, you know, yeah. how about the unknown or Huntress? Mm-hmm. You know, people that are all that would be more local to help Batman. Or heck, even fall on the Titans. The yeah, Batman something. Titans. Like more people yeah. that are more down down the earth per real talk down the earth. I think that would be a lot cooler because if Superman comes in it, I feel like that like, you know, you could beat up these guys two seconds. So why am I teaming up with right. you? Yeah. Really? And, well, and that's the thing with Superman. That's what makes him hard. Someone, yeah. He, it's hard to make an actual game with him because if he, they only take him out of earth, just let him go out to the galaxy, mm-hmm. make a game that does involve earth. But it, there's more power. Unless people. he's fighting the um, uh, dark side and his villains. But that's that, the fun part about it, right? Yeah. Like the galaxy's so big, they can make up, Bad guys are more powerful than Superman. True, true. Just saying, but, and, but we're that's a that's Superman. We're yeah, not that, we're not here for Superman. Superman. We're here but for Batman. Yeah, ba- Batman <laughs> has so much he can. He, in fact, he doesn't even have to stay in Gotham. He can have a mission. He can go chase Rachel Al Ghul down in okay. the Middle East. He can go, you know, Bloodhaven. Yeah, Bloodhaven. You know, and get into it with Nightwing. He can go chase. Uh, uh, like he did in one of his cartoon in the cartoon. He went to Metropolis briefly because he okay. was chasing down a cross lead. Oh, okay. These guys were carrying Luthor tech or something. Like yeah. that. And you want that in the Grand Theft Auto kind of more open like I that, mean, right? I, in the openness, yes. 
I, I don't know if you could do it with the Arkham Asylum type fidelity, but or Arkham City, but have that wider. Well, world. that's the thing. Well, Almost like so, an Assassin's Creed so, Two feel. So, would you like a brand new Batman game that would portray like that, or are you talking about why Curtis is? He's talking about continue on with Rocksteady left that has left. Um, I think there's enough people who who could follow Rocksteady and do a decent job, mm-hmm. but I still stick by my. I want a week in the life of Batman because okay. some days it's all detective work. Some yeah. days he is fighting for his life. Sometimes it's a mix. You know, and okay. some days he's just you, you know he's navigating uh, navigating with uh, his his diplomat diplomatic skills. I almost said something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> his, his diplomacy. His diplomacy is I already know the next move you're going to make. So okay, but yeah, I'd love to see a, a week in the life of Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, I want a new studio, a brand new Batman game. I think okay. I think what Arkham, the Rock City, left behind should just stay the trilogy. It is adding mm-hmm. on to that. I think just. It just needs to be something new. I think okay. Arkham Knight left a good mark there. Yeah, adding on to it because I want actually to tell you, I want like a new Batman look and I want new villains to look different. Yeah, like like it's kind of like um, the Batman's during our during our during, uh, during our generations of Batman's be influenced by Batman, but make it your Batman. Yeah. Now a lot of people skipped over the Batman. Remember that cartoon? Yeah. I skipped over it on purpose. Yeah. But you could tell it was influenced by, uh, you know, the uh, the Batman before. Yeah. But they did it their way, and I, it maybe not be your, your your favorite show or anything. But I I did give credit that you know you this is your it. Joker, this mm-hmm. is your Two Face, this is your Penguin. By the way, I like the way the Penguin looks in that show. I think he looks cool. Mister Freeze, a little bit too animated. But I like that they took it and but they made it their own. That's See, what I want from the next one. That's almost hitting on what Telltale did. Was uh, I mm-hmm. applaud Telltale for? Changing it up, like this yeah. is our Batman, this is our Bruce Wayne, this is our Cobblepot. Right. Yes. This is yes. our vision yeah. of it. So with that, I want it where if you have played a game called Deus Ex, uh, Human Revolution, mm-hmm. or um, uh, Mankind he, Divided. Divided, yeah, the the system I want is the free to do it your way. And okay. the way I want is Batman is a thinker and he can think of any situation. I want the ability to think of a different way. Maybe not coming straight at now, granted, there is some we're most of the time when you fight a villain, you're mostly stuck in a room with him. And you either have to outsmart him by, you know, like Mr. Freeze. You have to outsmart him in some other way, right? But yes. I want it where you can use your tech to defeat the enemy without even trying to throw a fist or something. Yeah. Like, like different ways to defeat it based on the abilities of your skills. If you're skilled more in gadgets, I should maybe try to beat this person without without having That's to throw a fist. That's a good point because every boss battle, you're punching them out. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe you're, I want to be hitting them so you can wail on Right. Them. Or maybe I want to do my point store being strong in defense. So maybe I want to fight him. You know, I want the option to do it my my way. So kind of a more even more of an RPG element. You don't have to say RPG because you know now nowadays. Stats based. Well, I'm just saying Arkham, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight had a point system. You love you leveled up in those, yeah. but there, I don't really get some a true it RPG. Skill, it was a skill tree though. It was more of a skill tree than anything. It else. can still be a skill tree in this too. Okay, but you're still getting points to level up to get the skill tree open, right? Okay, well, I'm, I'm okay. From per, per saying, se, per like se, strength versus gadgets. I was like, okay, are you talking about tech techniques? Or it could be gadgets. you could skill tree could be technique skill tree can be just armor and just heart. It's kind of like Borderlands. Do you want to be more of a tr- uh, strategy person? Do you want to be more of the straight in your face, or do you maybe want to be more of a um you know um a gadget person? Like the smart guy could be more of his detective skills. Yeah, maybe he can outdo something. But I want to stick with two because he's mostly known for gadgets in talking with his fists. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to be an then you can mix and match. It, but it's very tricky doing that because a lot of games that do, you can take whatever path you want. They end up having, or people find a min-max way of, yeah, but it's really going to be this path that you're supposed to take. I I, I, well, I would like well, what you're saying. Well, not the path. It, I get. I, I'm confused when you're saying path. I'm just talking about a different way how to defeat an enemy. Yes, I'm sorry. A different, sorry. A different. A different uh, style. A, 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 yeah, a different tack when you fight an enemy. Yes, you can take on. Any, I want any anyone to be equally feasible. And I guess for the listeners, let me give you an example. So Deus Ex, um, they actually did a remastered, and actually they went in and put in a patch where at first there was only one way to beat an enemy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you went back in the the re when they redid it, um. You can. I actually hack robots to go in and kill the enemy for me, and I just sat back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the first time I had to play, it was gun for gun. 
Yeah. I couldn't do anything. That's the thing I kind of want to do with Batman. Can I use gadgets like maybe throw a batarang or something? And when he gets near it, maybe it could shock his system and let him go based on the skills that I progress. Now, I don't want it to be a cakewalk because I don't want to be where well, gadgets is the easiest way to win it. No, it needs to still be challenging that yeah. even when I do gadgets, yeah. this person's just not an idiot. And he's yeah. gonna fall for it. I just want to find that balance, and I feel like that'd be just cool to do it your way instead of just always talking with your fist when you get a lucky break, when you knock somebody in the head with the with the batarang, and now I'm gonna come and do combos. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I would like to see a little bit of balance of that. Um, another one I have is different paths for replay value, and what I mean by that is I want to be able to replay this game because the route and the decision I have made took me down this route. Okay. So. Give, you can give me 20 villains, but this one path I take you can only get me to five or six or, six or seven or eight of those. And then, based on my other decision, if I replay it again, it will take me down this one. So down this line, I could be fighting Poison Ivy, Two-Face, Scarface, Calendar Man, or whatever. And I'll still get the, the – they're both coming at the same ending no matter what. Yeah. But this is my path that took me on this ride. And then this path maybe takes me to Joker, Harley, Clay Mr. Face. Freeze, Clayface, you know – It'd be so cool to just see a different path based on your decision instead of like I have to go through every single person. There all the is time. an indie title. Um, it's on my PS4 right now called Stories. Uh huh. It's uh, you play a fox. I know sword. what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. every decision branches off. So something yeah. like that. Yeah. Except like those endings are super short, and you have to replay that game like ten times till you find the true ending. Yeah. This one I don't want that. It's okay. just more of you're gonna beat the game, but this is the path that took me. Okay. That's what I'm saying. And then that gives me a chance to go back again and say, hey, I'm going to decide to maybe save this person. Or I'm going to go out to – basically, what villain do I want to chase first? But you'd that? be open to borrowing stuff from okay. like, no, kind of like be, that. I'd be yeah. down for that. I would definitely my, – my, my hesitance is, is why would I want to – aside from seeing those different villains and fighting them, why would I want to play it multiple times if I'm going for the same ending? I, I mean I think – Well, no, I'm saying it has – let's put it like this. You, I'm saying like it's going to still meet you in the middle. It's just okay. not – it's not going to be – exactly the same ending i'm sorry i didn't mean to say like it's going to be the same no matter what i'm talking okay. more like i'm going through this path we're meeting the middle for the climax no matter what but this ending is going to give me a different ending compared if i went to this path and this gives me a different okay, ending okay. sorry so i didn't mean to sound that confused i didn't mean like yeah. at the end joker's going to be standing in the middle of it no it's more of yeah. like this is the path i have i saved the city because i went this path yeah yes but what about these other villains we don't know that's why you got to take this other path and find out when you replay it again yeah and yeah, no, that would be that would be good, especially kind mm -hmm. of like a Rashomon. You see from a different angle, different perspective. You see maybe this storyline or another mm -hmm. part of that story. Yeah, that was going on. And I guess I'm just trying to find a way to replay these games. Now, this yeah. what I say, it could be a lot harder than it seems. I bet it is hard to like. Mm -hmm. How can I do a path in this path and still be good? You know what I mean? So I understand that could be the hardest thing. But to me, I guess it'd be kind of cool to just say. You know, I want to fight all these villains, but then again, I don't want to sit and do every single villain. Maybe yeah. I just want a path like, hey, this connects to this, this, and this. This would be cool. You know, and then that gives you a chance to explore the city a little bit more. And yes, and then I like the patrol thing. Let's add the yeah. patrol to that mix. That would be awesome. Exactly. I mean, you're, you, are, you are going on patrol. You're maybe investigating something else. Yeah, and, and that patrol can down. get you that split. That would be so awesome. Yeah, you're like, all right, do I continue this or – uh, that guy looks like he's carrying one of you know two a member of Two Faces gang. I better right. investigate. You know? Right, and then the, the one thing I really want for the Batman in that world was like I want to go. I want to go to my home. I just <laughs> want to draw. I, I just no. I just want to walk into my mansion and go to in there. Yeah. That'd be just cool just to see in general. That's just small. The last thing I have is live with consequences. What I want is kind of like Heavy Rain. Okay, and not because someone died off. Because the decision you make, if you made the bad decision, the story continues. So I didn't get Two Face. The story continues. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't beat Joker. The story continues. That's what I want. And that means that I didn't get that ending that I truly want because maybe I didn't save this person. The yeah. story continues. So, like, I, until dawn. Basically, if I made a mistake, let me live with that mistake and move yep. on. Look, I'm not, I'm Batman. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm probably not going to save that girl because maybe I took a wrong turn or I took too long. That's my fault. Let me move on mm -hmm. okay. and let them remind me of it. That'd be yeah. awesome. Like, hey, you messed up when you tried to save that girl. Yeah, I watched you. I saw that. Okay, yeah. Deadshot, whatever. You know, 
I don't know. Right? I, I, I feel like that this is a way for me personally. See, that to... could also affect, like, mm-hmm. let's say you had a hostage situation. And this, if you failed on the previous mission, the SWAT team might give you shit. Yeah. And like, no, you need to stand down. And Gordon's like, I, my hands are tied, man. Yeah. Or if he did, it's like, Gordon's like, you guys need to be quiet. And the SWAT team's like, go two for it, man. Two or three different ways to infiltrate either. Thing, or hey, you know, the SWAT team's like, do your thing, man. Go yeah. for it. Or <laughs> even spare or kill a villain. Yeah. Oh, so that's and where, that's a, that's, I know that's, that's where WB one. will probably uh, Warner Brothers might step in because yeah. you have certain guidelines you, their heroes can or cannot. Oh do. please, <laughs> yeah, the Batman v suit they with murder men. Yeah. Well, <laughs> first off, <laughs> yeah, and, and you see where that got them. You see okay. Where that got them. Okay. Right. So, but I do know vid- uh, the, the video games and the comics and things like that. They try and tend okay. to have a hard. Okay. No, no, yeah. I'll give you that. I, okay. I know that's tough. That's tough to say if he lives or die. Maybe they need to make it where a, ch- a still a tough choice you put him in trash. do you let him do you let him go or do you lock him up or something i, I don't know villain in traction there is he coming out in cuffs or a wheelchair yeah i mean <laughs> I, I i'm looking at it this way uh wheelchair every single one is hard to run away when your legs broke yeah that's true that's true but no i that thing to me and you guys you, anything yeah go ahead and add but like i feel like that we got to to me rock said he had it it's yeah. time for someone else to do something else in their own way and make yeah. it cooler, because then you're gonna maybe get that record of, well, it's like rock steady, but dot dot dot. Kind of going with the branching path. I like your patrol idea. Like, let's say he did a we- weapons raid, like raided a warehouse, mm-hmm. yeah. and he come. You kind of clean up the scene looking for clues, and you see something out of the blue, and it's like, well, what's this? What? Why is? It, why are they running guns? Who is this source? And you follow this complete other side quest yes mm-hmm. you, fall, you find a thread and you just keep you you don't yeah. have to keep pulling it. You, you don't really have to don't pull have it to, yeah you, but you just keep pulling it and but there has to be enough of that in there where it doesn't become formulaic right because i've seen that in become the 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 buzzword in get new games and it's just it's formula like fable you know, yeah it becomes too formulaic i want to see i want to really you want it like, to feel natural yeah yeah it, it's like oh i bet what this is going to be it's like if anything can happen yeah mm-hmm. and so um i think with some polishing, I think Insomniac could do it. Okay. Oh, we're, oh, we're picking developers now. I, okay. I, I, I'm. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw that card down after what say, they I did do, with Spider Man. Yeah, I'd be fine with I, that. I think, especially with the experience they have with Spider Man, um, they can just easily improve upon that. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, Insomniac and make it their own. Yeah, they can. They say, yeah, it's a little bit of Rocksteady, but we're throwing our own stuff in it. You know, okay. or or even keeping the rock theme, rock star. That would be uh, that would be Rockstar's good at entertainment, but they're not very good on like combat mm-hmm. fighting. You know what'd be fun is a Batman sixty six set with the Adam set <laughs> Adam West. That would yeah. be that would be a fun short game. I wouldn't yeah. want a whole game. Okay, like that. I want like a little twenty five dollar PSN game. That would okay. be that, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that that would be. But but yeah, I, well, Rockstar. Okay, so I haven't played the latest Red Dead Redemption yet. Okay, um, but the uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, it, it was okay. The gunplay was okay, but that's it. You can't do. They can't do melee very well. It seems. Now, and that's where I'm. I guess I'm getting at yeah, is that melee. Yeah. Now I could be wrong because that was not their main focus. The main focus was giving you a big playground to play on. Yeah, that's the, the fighting thing. and the shooting was an afterthought. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so I can be completely wrong. I, it would be. I don't know. It would almost be like um. You guys have seen that sh- that, that movie Batman Gotham Gotham Knights or Tales from Gotham Knight? Different animators and different storytellers take their take right. on Batman. I would. It'd be fun to have a game a game an anthology. Yeah, yeah. Different developers their take on Batman. So if they had a big budget, it's never gonna happen. This is okay. a pie in the sky. It's never gonna happen. Only because I think it'd just be wild to see their vision of Gotham Platinum Games. I don't know why. Yeah, that would be weird. Be I know inter- it would be interesting. I know. Yeah, I know. But remember, now they did turtles. Yeah. But they now here's the thing though, like, and transformers. The problem, the problem with platinum is they're not very good with licensed products because, and that's the same thing with uh, Arc System Works and everything like that because of of um because they're limited to their imagination. Yeah. yeah. And that sucks. So I probably never yeah. happen like that. Um, the only reason why I say platinum, because platinum is really good with action. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see what they would do with Batman as an action. Now, remember, Square Enix did their interpretation of Batman. Remember that 
Remember that Final Fantasy version of Batman? They did that thing was wild. Look it up. Dang. That's a wild. Yeah, I have to look. Yeah, wild for it. Um, but no, Rockstar is good. I can't think of right now who I was going to think Naughty Dog, but Naughty Dog hasn't really took a chance on open world. They're very good at narrative. Yeah, yeah. The closest we saw to open world was uh, Uncharted Four with that mm-hmm. one. But now section. And then, um, yo, no, that's right. That's right. Or maybe actually, maybe Sucker Punch. Yeah, Sucker Punch could do it. Sucker Punch Studios. Yeah, you know, Infamous. Mm-hmm. And then they have that Ghost of Tsushima coming out. You know? I, I, yeah, I want to see what they do with Ghost of Tsushima. God, first. could you imagine From Software did it? Oh, goodness. It'd be unnecessarily hard just to make people feel oh better. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I'm, 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 I'm mostly joking. I, I kind of want to play Sekiro. I still want to play mm-hmm. Sekiro. It's... Mm-hmm. it's I'll get it when the price right. drops, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I honestly tell you, man. I honestly don't know a studio who would do it. Um, I, I really don't. Uh, I actually want to be surprised. I want it from a studio that like, hmm, never expect y'all to do it. Uh, so you want the uh, you want the Heath Ledger factor? Nobody thought Heath Ledger could do Joker, and yet he did it. Yeah. Everybody was like, how are you? Well, no one knew who him? Rocksteady was until they did Batman. Exactly. Yeah. And that's one of the things. It's like, who the hell is Rocksteady? Like yeah. this, it's almost like The Witcher. Like, who is CG red? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm wonder, actually wondering what else they did before before Batman. I'm curious because right. that's a hell of a thing you just well, jump into. You do yeah. that as I, uh, anybody else want to add before we have to wrap up? I'm good. Oh, they did Urban Chaos Riot Response, which was not a good game. What, Rockstar? Uh, Rocksteady. Rocksteady. Oh, okay, because Rockstar also did that state of uh, state of emergency game. Yeah. And that was not good. Yeah, so, but everybody has one back so, game. So yeah, Urban Chaos was a first-person shooter developed by Rocksteady Studios. Yeah, okay. What a jump! What a yeah, jump, right? was Arkham the very next thing? Uh, let's see. In their in their timeline list, they had let's see, Urban Chaos in 2006, then Batman Arkham Asylum in 2009. Wow. So, okay. So yeah, the, um, they developed, who were like, they a, under so on they Urban or, in on Urban Le- on Urban? What uh, who were they under at the time? Uh. Uh, under they were who was their publisher? Their publisher was Eidos or Eidos Interactive. Okay, same people that did Tomb Raider at the time. No, people that did no, it was Eidos at the time. Yeah, yeah. Before they changed any of the Crystal Dynamics, is that what they were? I believe so. And they decided to get rid of tank controls. Yeah. <laughs> but for the listeners, what Batman? What do you want for the next Batman game that might be coming soon? Because Batman has to come back. They can't just leave that. I don't care if it's Rocksteady again. And if they end up doing the same thing they do, then so be it. It'll yep. still be a great game regardless. Yeah. But you know, you gotta I, buy it. Yeah, but I I still would like just to see someone else's hand. If, if Rocksteady, a, a a company that's been gone for so long since that one. Oh yeah. And came back and did this. I think it's a possibility to see another studio do it their way and still have fun yeah. with I it. Yeah. I mean, they did Arkham Knight and then they did the Batman VR and then we haven't yeah. heard from Rocksteady since. Yeah. Rumor has it there was a lot of rumors going on with that they were doing they were playing a Superman game. Yeah. A, lo- a long time ago they were talking about Team of Ninja, which I think that would have been a badass yeah. idea at the time. I could I could see them even properly doing an Iron Man game, but no, we're getting Iron Man VR. Right. Oh, all right. Maybe Moon Knight. Anyways, so <laughs> but I want to but what Batman what do you want to see from the next Batman game? Do you want Rocksteady to do it or what do you have a developer or what do you want to see? Do what would you, you like in your game? Yeah, what do you want in yes. your Batman? What do you want in your Batcave? So, um, with that, I want to thank everybody for listening to the show. Uh, Jerron, thank you once again for coming coming on the show once again. My pleasure. Curtis, once again. Thank you. Um, wh- let it, let everybody know where they can catch you in your show, in oh, your other show. My other show is called the Sunday Anime Podcast, and it is on Spreaker.com, mm-hmm. and there are some episodes on YouTube. So far, we've done Trigun, Guren Lagan, Your Lie in April, and this month we are releasing a place further than the universe. Okay, and where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, SCI. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember my Twitter <laughs> handle. Yeah. Okay, we'll just look for my link I got for him. Because as you can find me as RetroAmp07. SCICT85. There oh, you go. And there is also an email account for Sunday Anime Podcast. It's Sunday Anime Podcast at yahoo.com. There you go. And then you can find me as RetroAm07 on Twitter. And you can find me at the Grumpy Bear 84 on Twitter. And uh, eventually I'll start Twitch streaming again. And I'll let you know when that happens. And 
Remember, you can always catch our shows on Spotify, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube. Just make sure you look up the Endgame Boss program. And, you know, it'd be great if you just, you know, leave a comment or leave a five-star rating. Anything that you can contribute in great reviews will help us get more notice and everything like that. And, you know, celebrate the one-year anniversary of the show. I'm hype. Yeah, Yay. popping bottles. <laughs> right, right. And no, nothing is better than talking about a Batman game, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we, we love Batman. This is how it is. Yeah, we are the knight. And, right. And it, it did set the table of this is how you do combat fighting. Yeah. Yes. Beat me. Inspired, and Samiak came in. Exactly. And so, exactly. so they're showing there. So who else is going to try to take over? Who's going to come in with their two feet? And so, but remember, um, on our next episode, we'll be talking about our E3 predictions. Oh, get it! E3, E3 is coming, <laughs> so there's going to be some fun chat. Hopefully, I, I think I got a guess for that. If not, get ready for just our choices of the episode. And we might have a bonus episode that someone requested. Uh, Adam Walker, shout out to you. Uh, yep. But we'll we're talking about it. we're trying to plan that idea. But um, I I don't want to be that dick. But you know, don't hold your breath. <laughs> but but we're we're just trying to work if it's the right time to do that episode and whatnot. And mm-hmm. so but um with that we will catch you on our next episode. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>